yeah uh, all other participants going to another uh, workshop for example uh, which one computational linguistic workshop will be uh, on another link and please going there and today let me start our session and uh, I propose such um, timeline. Uh, one report from Intelligent System Workshop and one report uh, Machine Learning Workshop. And then again, Intelligent System Workshop and so on. Are you agree? If no, any... Um, argue against, then we will start. I present Yuri Krivinchuk, and uh, also we have 10 minutes for report and five minutes for uh, questions. Okay? okay? 10 report, five questions. And uh, okay. Yuri Krivinchuk, Mikhail Dmitrishin, are present here? No? Please, no. Okay, Nazari Grigorash also absent. Okay, then please, Ivan Pelishak, Metro Dudek, Vasil Litvin, Roman Pelishak, and Petro Pukac report. It will be. Hello. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, you can share no. your screen. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, do you see? Yeah. Please. Uh, hello, my name is Dmitro Dudek, and today I'm honored to present our research on the influence uh, of the number of neighbors uh, on the clustering metric by a slittery haotic neural network with deeplocentric connection. Uh, we are investigating how uh, different clustering measures uh, change based, uh, based on the number of neighbor connections. Um, by using metrics like adjusted rent index and solute coefficient, uh, we hope to make uh, our clustering algorithm more effective in real-world situations. Uh, chaos is a phenomenon of complex, unpredictable, and random behavior uh, arising from a simple deterministic uh, nonlinear systems. Uh, leveraging the principles uh, of uh, chaos and, and neural network uh, allow us to, complex, uh, to solve complex problems in various fields. Uh, we direct the chaotic dynamics of the network so the neurons organize themselves into synchronized clusters. Uh, this slide uh, shows the mess uh, behind our study. Uh, we have formulas for two types of connections in our neural network, uh, Dipole and Gaussian. Uh, plus, we have the uh, evolutionary equation that guides uh, how our network uh, changes over time. We run this equation multiple times, uh, starting from random uh, to top. Uh, these formulas and the equations help us understand how our network works. Um, uh, we start with random number uh, between minus one and one, and then run an uh, evolutionary equation t times. We split this process into two parts. First, a quick phase where we set uh, things up, uh, then a longer phase uh, where we collect data about how each neuron oscillates. Uh, if neuron's output goes beyond the threshold of zero, we assign it a value of one, uh, otherwise, it gets uh, zero, indicating whether it fires or not. Uh, from this runs, we calculate an information matrix uh, that shows um, how much neurons uh, share, uh, share information. Uh, clusters uh, are like uh, groups of neurons that stick together. Uh, we find them by setting a threshold value theta. If theta is very low, uh, all points uh, belong to one big cluster. If it um, if uh, it's high. Each point forms its own cluster, but if it's more um, interest, uh, but uh, the more interesting case uh, is uh, when the theta is, is in between, uh, as it's shown as a group of neurons that uh, oscillate together. Mm. When studying how the number of neighbors uh, na neighbors affect Oceanian clustering, uh, choosing the right matrix is crucial. Uh, in our research, we rely on the adjusted rent index and the slot coefficient uh, and slot coefficient. Uh, adjusted rent index uh, as vital, uh, vital as it evaluates the agreement uh, between true classes and clusters. 
Uh, what makes a risk stand out is uh, ability to adjust for random agreements, uh, ensuring uh, reliably clustering accuracy, even with uh, diverse class distributions. Uh, meanwhile, the silhouette coefficient assesses uh, how compact and separate objects are within clusters. Uh, it provides insight into both uh, the shape and distance between clusters. Mm. Uh, in our work, we uh, employed uh, four distinct datasets. Atom, illustrating linear inseparability. Uh, Wingdang, demonstrating uh, small intercluster and large intercluster distances. Uh, two diamonds, presenting a weak link connection cluster. And uh, and time as it uh, showing overlapping cluster of different densities. Uh, our experiment aims to determine the ideal number of neighbors uh, for various network and dataset uh, setups for uh, to optimize clustering. Uh, by systematically adjusting neighbor counts uh, in interactive clustering runs, we assess uh, their impact on clustering quality. Uh, to reduce uh, randomness, we average clustering metrics over five initial conditions, ensuring more reliable results. Uh, ultimately, we seek to uncover the best parameters for accurate uh, clustering uh, in oscillatory haotic neural network, uh, and in our understanding of this uh, relationship across uh, different uh, datasets. Uh, the atom dataset uh, present a challenge due to linear inseparability in Cartesian space. Uh, uh, as the number of nearest neighbors increases, maintaining a constant uh, array metric value requires uh, adding cluster resolution. Uh, higher neighbor counts enable a uh, network with Gaussian connections to discern uh, thinner um, distinctions among data points, uh, forming uh, clearer uh, clusters. Uh, in the left figure, the parameter window size theta uh, for the maximum array matrix uh, value expand uh, with increasing nearest neighbors in Gaussian synaptic network until it is hold uh, approximately k equal uh, 75, uh, where it uh, decreases, indicating potential false cluster uh, detections uh, due to excessive network complexity. Uh, in uh, contrast, network with deeper connections exhibit less sensitivity to neighbor count changes. Uh, with a small maximum window size uh, compared to synaptic uh, network. As this uh, suggests, uh, deep network uh, can only identify uh, course uh, distribution among the data. Uh, in the WingNet uh, dataset, uh, clustering poses a challenge due to its unique dist uh, distribution, where intercluster distances are small uh, compared to intercluster distances. Uh, this complexity can uh, hinder traditional algorithm's ability to uh, distinct uh, Close, um, close spaced uh, clusters, but presenting clear uh, separation. Uh, notably, the network with deep synaptic connection achieves uh, superior array value in this uh, data set. This uh, superiority is attributed to the network's uh, prioritizi uh, prioritization of near big points, uh, characteristic more pronounced in deep connections uh, compared to Gaussian connections. Um, Two diamond uh, that I said uh, present a unique wide challenge with the clusters almost touching uh, at the, the corners, make it, it harder for standard algorithm to identify the subtle uh, separation between them. Uh, the uniform distribution of points within each diamond add the complexity, uh, requiring not linear methods uh, for effective clustering. Uh, while network with Gaussian uh, connections uh, offer a wider clustering uh, resolution a window for uh, two diamonds, uh, network with deep connections uh, require uh, fewer ne uh, nearest neighbors. Uh, this enables them to discern clusters with uh, high precision, even uh, with a limited uh, number of neighbors. Uh, and uh, end time uh, that presents a challenging uh, scenario with overlapping clusters uh, where traditional algorithm uh, struggle due to unclear uh, boundaries and a uh, Gaussian mixture distribution. Uh, effective clustering uh, requires methods uh, capable of capturing uh, density information and discerning the data set, data set underlying structures. Uh, in any time network with Gaussian connection, uh, outperforms this with deep connections uh, at lower value of nearest neighbors. Uh, this difference is stemmed from uh, the data sets, uh, complexity uh, necessitated necessitating uh, the considering uh, of density information. Uh, trust Gaussian connections prove more effective for datasets with linear inseparability uh, or uh, intricate uh, topology. Uh, 
it uh, it can it has uh, been established as that oscillatory chaotic neural network with uh, deep connections uh, excel in solving uh, diverse uh, clustering tasks uh, compared to gaussian com uh, to gaussian connections uh, offering flexibility and uh, resonance uh, to neighbor count uh, variation uh, it had been uh, demonstrated that uh, deep connections are particularly effective for the sets with uh, intricate inter-cluster data sets uh, showcasing their adaptivity. Uh, it has been uh, determined that the network with Gaussian connections exhibit high, uh, high resolution, making them uh, suitable for data sets with linear inseparability or uh, special structure. Uh, also, it has been uh, identified that the optimizing uh, neighbor count is essential for maximizing uh, clustering quality and resolution window uh, for each uh, network and data set. Do you have any questions? Ooh. Thank you for your report. <clears throat> uh, any questions from listeners? No question. I have a little bit uh, strange questions, but it's yeah. about uh, frequency of oscillations. Uh, you means that neurons are oscillating. What is yeah. uh, what kind of oscillation you use? Mm, so, and why have... they need to be oscillated? Uh, uh, we have uh, this evolutional equation that uh, we run a t time. Uh, we start with uh, random value and uh, we, uh, we give information about uh, distance uh, points distance in uh, in weights uh, in gaussian or dipole and around uh, and run this evolutional equation and uh, this evolutional equation uh, creates uh, creates uh, oscillations for each neuron and uh, yes, and uh, these oscillations uh, uh, after uh, some period uh, can uh, repeat itself. So, uh, so we can uh, find the patterns in these uh, oscillations. If if this um, is this uh, points connected. In, but exists some range of uh, frequencies of these oscillations, uh, megahertz, uh, hertz. Uh, uh, no, uh, we, really. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have in this system. We don't have uh, any frequencies. We just give uh, information about uh, uh, about point uh, location in the space. Uh, <coughs> And system uh, take this information and uh, create uh, oscillation based on this. Okay. Um, no other questions. Thank you for your report. Thank you for Thank you. attention. Yeah. And we are going to next report. And uh, maybe uh, already pr uh, present Kravinchuk and <clears throat> co-authors, uh, Dmitrishin, Kravinchuk, Grigorash, no present, no. Then we're going to next report, Taras Basiuk, Andriy Vasiliuk, we have last info. Uh, very good. We can use this. Мы можем поширити зараз секундочку. Момент. Which one? 
moment Please, my dear. Come on, come on. I just can't see you. I'm carrying. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, dear colleagues, I would like to present here an article on the topic uh, issues of information system development of interactive communication in foreign languages. And uh, uh, in a start, uh, the communication makes it possible uh, to obtain the necessary information, helps with the online communication, and it's also a powerful uh, impetus in the uh, transition to a new level of communication. Uh, the purpose of, uh, of an uh, interactive correspondence system in foreign languages is necessary to solve, uh, to solve the problem uh, uh, of the language barrier. Uh, the system should provide high quality and fast translation between many languages, such, uh, such a system helps users communicate on the internet. This approach can be used both for official correspondence and for communication. It depends uh, the weight of the system. Uh, can also be applied in other fields, for example, for translating uh, numerous documents and sending them between users, or for speech uh, recognition and automatic okay. translation. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, they conducted uh, another show that there are many methods and techniques of machine translation. Uh, in general, the following methods of machine translation can be dis uh, distinguished. Like uh, translation based on dictionary, translation based on, uh, based on the rules, machine translation based on knowledge, focus of machine language, uh, translation, uh, statistical approach, statistical approach to the word based machine translation non model, machine translation based on zone, and uh, the two last narrow machine translation uh, and the uh, hybrid machine translation. Uh, the purpose of the research is to develop a prototype. Of a mobile system of interactive correspondence in foreign languages, here yeah, uh, uh, to, simp uh, to simplify the communication process between uh, foreigners. Yeah, but the main goal of this system is not to compete with uh, you know, with professional translators, uh, since machine translation has not yet reached the appropriate uh, level. But the system uh, settings and uh, and uh, selected means of implementation should provide the most uh, the most accurate translation. Uh, current understandable user interface is an also an important task that is solved. Such a system should require a minimum of uh, effort uh, from the user. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, the first step is design of the system. It's uh, this process of creating a detailed plan of a model. For the implementation of a system with uh, certain function, functional requirements and characteristics. So this phase of system often define, defines exactly how the system will be built, uh, interact with the users and other components, and how uh, and how to provide the quiet uh, functionality and performance. Uh, activity, di uh, activity diagram is one of the types of the diagram in the unified model language which used uh, to model the sequence of actions, processes, and behavior of the system or object. Uh, the developed diagram clearly shows how the system works and what its uh, components are. Uh, next uh, is the sequence the diagram of clarity, uh, clarify the order of operations, uh, as well as identify parallel processes and interactions between uh, objects in the system. In this type of diagram, the interaction with selected system objects at a certain point in time is uh, demonstrated. And the next stage was the selection of mathematical support of the given task implementation. In general, the task of machine translation is to translate an input uh, sentence F in one language into output sentence 
Here in other language, uh, that uh, must uh, have the same meaning as F. Yeah, this is done by building a static model that represents the translation process. And the next stage was the creation of a, a functional model using the algorithms. Uh, as a result, we use uh, the apparatus of the algorithms, uh, the following sequences and eliminations were synthesized. Um, and uh, the development system is characterized by uh, by intuitive interface and the script uh, described functionality. When uh, on this slide you can see when we're logging into the system for, from the mobile application, the user is prompt uh, to to select the functionality that needs to be obtained. Yeah, and uh, after logging in a list of available rooms is displayed. Uh, allowing you to choose uh, and start uh, chatting. Uh, also, as you figure, you can see that the use of such available functions uh, as creating a new one or quick search. Uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the rules. Uh, and you can see uh, what, uh, what can do. What you can do. Uh, by opening the user profile, you can view uh, or change the name, email, password, uh, and translation language. Uh, before starting a conversation, or viewing messages, uh, you must select the desired room. After opening the room, uh, when, then all sent messages are displayed and you can start communicating in your native language. Native language, all, message, all messages will be automatically translated into the user's language. Uh, and an example of communication between several users, uh, you can see uh, on this slide here, uh, example. Uh, and uh, as a result uh, of the uh, conducted research, the existing methods and known systems that provide means of correspondence in four languages were analyzed. The next stage was uh, the design of the software system using the object oriented uh, approach and display creating diagrams in accordance with the UML standard. Uh, this study presents a diagram of the use cases, uh, activities, sequences, and classes. Uh, and the intelligent system of interactive communication for language has been developed in the form of a client server application for the mobile devices. And uh, at last, uh, at last part of research will be directed to testing and improving the system, uh, eliminating, the conf eliminating conflicts and expanding functionality in accordance uh, with the specified requirements because uh, our application is just like prototype and uh, some uh, functionality we can add in future research. Yes, that's all maybe some questions. Thank you, thank you. Uh, please. Uh, what uh, did you choose for, uh, for uh, as a platform for your mobile app? What language maybe, what framework? Uh, actually, uh, I, don't, I don't remember the code developer, I'm just, uh, Present uh, like mathematical methods uh, of uh, even uh, not mathematical methods, but uh, like uh, algebra of algorithms and this theory. Okay, this is my uh, approach to this. So just work. Uh, maybe you can see this. Uh, on, uh, this is uh, I don't have this on this on this presentation. It's can be described on uh, on paper. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is information not this information not slides. Any other, please? Um, could you tell us, please, uh, how the meaning of the sentence, uh, how you detect the meaning of the sentence when you choose the language uh, to translate? For example, you have a sentence in Ukrainian and you want to translate to Germany or English, whatever. Uh, how the meaning, how you detect the meaning exactly, and how this meaning will uh, my, uh, map, uh, or map on the another language? Uh, thank you for the question. It's a, actually it's a hard task because uh, you know when the language uh, and uh, other meanings you can see of those. Uh, actually, uh, this is uh, this system is uh, maybe like in prototype when we can use uh, some uh, simple sentences. You know, this, uh, where when a sentence is difficult, uh, it's more complex. Uh, it's harder to translate meanings. Uh, this uh, it's harder to to uh, to make uh, an other language uh, sentence uh, with this meaning. So actually, it's only for simple 
the sample system now. But uh, in further research, we can uh, right. add uh, more mm -hmm. more complex sentences, and uh, maybe mm -hmm. uh, then we can show you how to extract meanings from the Ukrainian uh, complex sentences to actually translate it to the sentences. You know, it's hard task. So when it's a simple sentence, uh, this meaning meanings. Actually, we can see it through the sentences. It's now not complex. No, uh, it is important because uh, you didn't highlight this, uh, uh, this this part of the system, and uh, it it looks like a black box a little bit. So, did you uh, compare this uh, prototype you approach which you proposed with the? Google translation, for example, I know this is not a mobile app, it is like web app, but but it's very powerful and uh... yeah, but it's not mobile app actually. Our task was to create mobile app, and uh, actually, I not compare it for this with Google app because Google is like okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we have not other questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your report. Yeah. And we are going now to the next report. The report by Roman Peleshak, Bodan Kishakevich, Bodan Demeduk, Yaroslav Kis, Oleg Peleshak. We will again try to, to connect your presentation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of this presentation? Article 20, Collins. 26. 26. Ah, Collins. Oh, yeah, 26. Yeah. Uh, a vector error correction model approach to analyze the causality among the SME export input activity and the economic development of the EU countries. Uh, but firstly, I'd like to touch on the uh, importance of that issue, uh, uh, given the very special role played by SME small to medium sized enterprises in the in European economy. And their role in financing the budgets, different levels, local, uh, uh, regional, on the macro level. And uh, if, if, if you have a look at that um, slide, you can see that the share of the number of enterprises SME is really incredible. 99.8% of all enterprises in the European Union are small or medium size medium size. Uh, their, their, their share in employment really is uh, as well a significant 64.4 percent and the value added is more than half 51.8 but as the one hand but on, on the other hand we have some disparity because the share of the total export for example uh, of SME is uh, under, it's only six, uh, 35 percent, uh, while large enterprises uh, gives uh, give uh, 65 percent, while uh, the number of those large and uh, large companies is un un uncomparably smaller than SME. Besides, uh, uh, besides. Uh, SME companies suffer a lot from the Russian invasion to Ukraine. They suffer directly, indirectly, directly through the diff uh, through the different sanctions, uh, and indirectly in the, uh, through the first of all uh, through the rising uh, energy prices. And uh, if you have a look at that in the next slide, you can see that the leaders in the export import are in EU, SME in EU are uh, uh, Germany, Netherlands, Italy, uh, Spain. Uh, and uh, we have here some interesting trend that the import in most of all the European countries a little bit higher than export. Uh, taking in, into account all those uh, issues, uh, we uh, we uh, we uh, constructed our 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 uh, aim and objectives of our, our research. We tried to add some small bricks 
in solving the problem. And the aim of our research is to examine how to export import operation of small and medium sized enterprises contribute to the economic advancement of the European Union. Uh, corresponding objectives uh, is here on this slide. Is first of all assessing the first step is uh, assessing the integration order of time series. The second is verification of the existence of uh, co integration between uh, time uh, analyzer time series and to build vector error correction models uh, for co integrated vector variables. The next is to establish a type uh, of short term or long term causality between analyze it time series. In, uh, to solve the problem, we used uh, the next uh, time series, GDP, GDP per capita. GDP is a gross domestic product. GDP is a G per capita. And the one concept, uh, GDP, is, as you know, is the number, uh, the sum of all um, prices of products produced in the country due, due over the year. And but GDP uh, concept has some uh, weak point. It doesn't account the inter inflation rate. Uh, and very often uh, some uh, economical uh, uh, high level of economical group can, can be due uh, is due to the rising of prices. Another uh, very similar concept is uh, value added the factor cost. We use it in our research as well as a, um, as a sum of all costs required to get the uh, uh, the output of the um, output of the country or, or during that year. It consists of cost of uh, production costs, depreciation, uh, wages, and so on. And export input as corresponding uh, values that characterize export input. The first step was to establish a time as a um, uh, level of uh, order of integration of time series. As many as most of the economical uh, economic time series, our time series um, uh, turn out to be uh, to be integrated first order. Um, the first order, according to the test um, uh, ADF. Fisher and uh, Pasaram and Shin uh, double test. So, uh, the next, the next, the next uh, point, the next step in our research was to uh, to establish uh, co integration, co integration uh, in between all possible sets of variables. And uh, for that, we use a Pedroni test. Uh, because it's the best, it's the, the most powerful test um, uh, for, uh, uh, for analyzing the panel data. Because we used here panel data of 28 European countries, 28 European countries, uh, 27 current, and for a Greek region as a former member, but we still use it in our, in our research. Uh, according to our uh, uh, obtained result, only two sets of variables uh, have uh, showed the existence of any evidence of uh, co integration. Any evidence? The set consists of GDP per capita export input, and the next, the, the following, the next uh, uh, set is. Is the uh, value value the value added is actual import? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only two sets, two sets of variables were uh, integrated. But it's a very important concept in uh, economic research, any economic research, co integration. It's a lot if having co, co integration between variables, it allows us to use uh, a lot of different models, and we use you know, uh, further. A value of vector recollection model. The most important here is that coefficient alpha, alpha one. It uh, gives us the answer to the main question uh, we, are, we are interested in. Uh, does it exist this uh, long term uh, causality, long term relationship, long term relationship between variables? If alpha one negative is a good sign, it means that 
Um, if, if it's statistically significant, it means that that long term integration exists. If it, if alpha one is positive, it means that uh, we we have no any reason evidence to say about to judge about existence along the line a relationship. We use EVUs for uh, for solving the problem, and uh, we constructed the vector correction model. And uh, alpha one for first set set uh, first set is here. Uh, GDP per capita uh, is positive. Moral of it, it's not statistically significant, and uh, it means that we have no we have no uh, long run causality. We have no we can we can say we can judge according to that model about the existence of that uh, relationship. But uh, what does uh, confirm existing short run causality? Because we have. Uh, we, we can uh, reject all normal hypothesis that it is equality zero um, lagged variables. And it means that uh, uh, short run, short run relationship is, is, is present here, uh, take place here. As I said, the, the, the next step, the, the next uh, uh, model was with value, value added the, 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 for that, for that um, uh, set of variables. And uh, unlike previous, we have here a negative alpha one and statistically significant because probability less than five and less than five percent. And uh, according to that model, yes, we can we can uh, confirm a long a long run uh, long run relationship, long run causality exists, and those variables can reach. Uh, uh, equilibrium, equilibrium state in long run, and this coefficient is the speed of adjust adjustment of that to reaching that uh, equilibrium state. In case uh, when a dependent variable, a dependent variable value value at uh, at, at um, deviate from that equilibrium state, this is the speed of adjustment for for one year. How the can come back to that equilibrium state due to expert input. Uh, short run exists as well uh, because we can uh, reject or reject the null hypothesis, probability zero. And what does it imply for uh, for a practical point of view? How is it important for policymakers, for uh, regulators, European governments? Is uh, is is important information for uh, because it give us uh, it uh, it give us the lack of uh, lack of co-integration between sets of two variables uh, imply that two, two variables for example GPC per capita import GPC per, per capita export implies that there is um, we have no co uh, direct co uh, or clear correlation between uh, those variables, unlike in European countries, unlike in developing countries, because a lot of in, in uh, economical research, economical literature, we can find a lot of evidence that, uh, for example, from some African countries, even uh, former Soviet Union countries, uh, that existence, uh, they, you know, we, they have a bidirectional relationship between GDP and uh, import or export. In European countries, the European economy is more complex, more complicated. And, and if we uh, want to analyze uh, influence of the international trade of the GDP G, uh, or value-added uh, economical development at all, we have to take into account both, uh, both import and export, because export can boost uh, economical uh, incomes, economical inco incomes of co companies, while uh, import as well as crucial, really very important, important is crucial for meeting the demands of European countries in uh, necessary goods, services, and so on. And uh, actually, that research provided now uh, uh, provided the coefficient. Uh, uh, coefficient of adjustment 
to the uh, how the, the system could give back to the equilibrium state in case of some shocks, economical shocks between international trade. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much for the report. Uh, maybe any questions from from online or anywhere? Yeah, I, 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 will, I would like to ask a question if it's possible. Please. So, yeah, so first of all, thank you for this amazing presentation. It was very informative and uh, interesting, but I, I still have a question. You just mentioned that some of the SMEs uh, have been under the sanction. And uh, I just asked them that it was some issue in your research. So can you please explain, because um, looking at the topics, you've been investigating the European countries. So how come the European SMEs are under the sanction? And maybe you could avoid this issue in your research. Maybe there are some statistical database, database set according to, to, the, uh, to, ah. to, to the sanction, to that issue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, really. Thank you. Thank you for question. Really, I mentioned that the European economy all suffer from uh, restriction, um, especially the first year of uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine. Uh, but uh, uh, the uh, small and medium sized enterprises, they have not such power like large companies to, to overcome all these obstacles. The, that is why they suffer much more higher more, the, 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 uh, even statistics uh, uh, for, uh, yeah we use the st statistic from 2000 uh, to 2021 uh, statistic for 2022 and started that uh, invasion actually in Eurostat is not uh, ready even up to now uh, probably since recently they they, they presented the statistics, but anyway, that uh, problem, uh, according to research, uh, a lot the latest it said is really take place that uh, the sanction, especially because uh, former uh, uh, Russian market was really uh, important for European uh, ent enterprises and. Uh, they 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 needed time to rebuild their their strategy and and so on. That is why. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No question. Thank you very much. You. Very interesting report. And uh, we are going to the next report. Uh, it will be again. Um, can we ask Taras Basuk, Andrei Vasiluk, methodological foundations of information system construction, and so on. One moment, we need again find out which one. He said that? Yeah, yeah. Fifty-five. And how to share my screen? One moment. It's not so simple. Let's stop it, okay. Um, no, previously I should close all these windows. Too many different windows open. In this, yes, and I will which one this I forgot So simple. Okay. Uh, sign language is a type of speech that is possible to express. Actually, this is yeah. Okay. Uh, 
that it expresses the hypothesis of the refraction expressions and motions and dependent. The adjuster is best performed to letters, words, and individual phrases. Sorry. Uh, despite the large number of people who suffer from uh, from hearing or speech impairments, San English has received a lot of attention from linguistics. Uh, in the world, the share of people with hearing problems is about five uh, percent uh, or uh, 130 million of the total population. Uh, sign languages are not universal in all countries uh, as they rise and develop naturally in different uh, territories and change our, over, uh, over time with the emergence of new vocabulary. In view of all the mentioned patterns, uh, the urgent task is to develop an information system uh, of recognizing uh, variants and language which will provide additional means of overcoming the language barrier between uh, communication subjects. Uh, and the analysis. Uh, wow. Oops. This doesn't work. Let's just plug in. So you put him Knut put and you put him Knut down. No, that's what it is. Moment. <coughs> Screen two. Так. И як он має перемикатися? Ну, може, ви зможете тут наступний слайд, я тут. Попробуємо знову. Тут забагато вікон відкрито, і я не знаю, котрі вікна де. I think it's a No, ale... Dobre, a tak jak przenikaty? Nie, to tu. Co? Excuse me, sharing here. Over. Okay. Uh, as I just showed, the existing methods of adjuster recognition and computer system are divided in two types: recognition based uh, on the creation of a human model and methods built on the principle of feature selection. Uh, uh, the first class of methods is based on the creation of kinematic model. This model must take, in, uh, uh, take into account each of the possible degrees of freedom, 
And the second class uh, of methods is based on processing of details of the input data in data stream, which are designed to, <coughs> to determine the coordinates of the object of the object uh, of recognition. So the method can be applied only if it's possible to determine a characteristic answer points or features or features on the images uh, of object. Wow. Okay. Oh. Uh, in many countries on the world, uh, the possibility of creating and popularizing processes from audio language to sign language and vice versa is being investigated. While the problem of, of translating sign language into Ukrainian language for the content still remains unresolved. Uh, it is worth noting that Ukrainian sign language, like any other sign language, uh, has its own rules and grammar. Yeah? Which, uh, which in turn does not allow to use existing dictionaries of foreign uh, sign languages. The analysis of the completed work shows significant progresses, progress in popularizing to the study of Ukrainian sign languages, but the lack of problem oriented software solutions uh, makes it further research and other task. Uh, the purpose of the research is to develop an information system for you know, for the recognition of Ukrainian sign, Ukrainian sign language. Uh, the conduct of the search will provide means for creating on its basis a software for managing information uh, reference content, uh, generating transforming elements of sign language, um, language and forming an individual learning environment for people uh, with, uh, with special needs. Uh, to achieve with the goal, the following task must be solved. Uh, so, at first, uh, you must analyze the existing approaches, methods, and uh, and sort of tools used in the field of Ukrainian sign language recognition to determine the main task, uh, tasks that arise at the same time, and analyze the methods and, uh, and algorithms of sign language recognition, recognition that uh, can be adopt, uh, adapted uh, during system development and to implement a prototype system for recognizing the Ukrainian sign language. Uh, in, order, in order to present the main aspects of the study the subject area, a scheme was, schema was analyzed that reflects the main stages uh, that must be implemented in, in the just recognition system. As can be seen from this feature, the main tasks in the process of just recognition are uh, obtaining an image, uh, uh, localization of the hand area and uh, the image and uh, just recognition. Uh, first of all, it was aimed to conduct the systematic uh, analysis for the subject area using the methodology, methodology of functional modeling and graphic description of processes. Uh, for these purposes, uh, a structural approach uh, and the idea of zero standard was intended uh, for the formalization and description of business uh, process were used. Uh, a context uh, diagram showing, uh, showing the process of recognizing the trans language is presented on future uh, uh, For a more detailed understanding uh, of the logic of the process taking place in the just recognition system, the development uh, context diagram was uh, decomposed into the several sub processes. The composition diagram is presented on figure three. As can be seen from the composition diagram, the entire process of just recognition uh, has been broken down into several sub processes for greater detail and understanding. Uh, uh, to highlight the point, uh, you can use a number of methods. It's uh, first uh, like uh, image visualization, uh, well transformation, can edge detect algorithm. Uh, the conducted analysis shown that uh, into account the peculiarities of the input information, it's advisable to use a simple visualization threshold, which is used to divide into black and white. <laughs> the result of the threshold visualization method is uh, shown on feature four. Uh, uh, there are many methods uh, can be used to recognize justice among, uh, in, uh, among the most common are method based on the hidden marker model and neural networks. Uh, as for neural networks, the main research and scientific results obtained in the fields of the application for just recognition include various methods and architectures that allow to perform this task efficiently, effectively, effectively, sorry, 
In general, uh, since uh, in our typical neural network visual learns with the teacher, this means uh, the presence of training set, uh, data set. Uh, it all this set contains, uh, contains uh, examples with true values, uh, text, classes, uh, classes, and metrics. Uh, the next stage uh, was the construction of the system using the modern software tools. Uh, to implement this software product, it was decided to use the C-sharp programming language uh, and the uh, .NET uh, cross-platform technology. We will use Visual Studio as an uh, IDA. Uh, the result of the collision zone production is, uh, is presented in Fish 7. Uh, oh, sorry, this is not the correct number, but yeah, maybe on the next slide you can see this. Uh, as a result of the work, the application was developed, which is able to recognize the gesture of an alphabet of the Ukrainian sign languages. Uh, language, so for clarity, the program outputs the result at each iteration, starting with the raw video uh, and ending with the recognition result into the form of gesture value. It all starts with a video capture, an example of a frame from the original on processing video stream and is binarized uh, reaction is shown on video fix. Uh, after selecting uh, the work with surface, uh, it needs to, 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 reduce, to reduce it uh, to a square, square image uh, since the selected largest contour is not uh, always a square. Uh, so the layer network contains uh, 4,096 uh, uh, input layers. So the final image is reduced to a size of 64, 64, 64 by 64 pixels. Uh, after capturing the image and clicking the recognize the gesture button, we take recognition uh, settings panel looks like this. And uh, as a result uh, of the conducted research, uh, the existing methods and non systems that provide means of recognizing. Ukrainian sign language and describe the mechanism of the implementation were analyzed. Technologies and software tools of sign language recognition were analyzed, which made it possible to identify uh, the features of uh, existing approaches. So the next uh, stage was the design of the software system using a uh, structural approach and displaying uh, this creating diagrams in accordance with the idea of zero or standard and uh, the developed prototype uh, is characterized by modular construction. Uh, the ability to recognize gest gestures of the Ukrainian alphabet and can be useful. An additional communication tool. Uh, the conducted research provides methodological and algorithmic foundations uh, for building a communication environment uh, for people with special needs. That's all, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Please, uh, questions. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what's the future of your research? Do you want to create uh, some maybe mobile app for yeah. if you want to touch on it? So it will uh, see, as I, I have right understood here, will uh, see the text for this, or maybe not see, ah, here, here are the text. And uh, see a video with the uh, uh, same language, yeah? Is, is it the uh, main goal of your... Rarely, so you like you want to, from the sound, or you uh, can produce an uh, image. Uh, yeah, as I wrote, all right, I understand here. Uh, no, actually, yeah, because we, we think, you know, this is just a prototype, and uh, in future research, we can uh, do a mobile app, because uh, not everyone sitting near a computer, near a network, a PC, yeah? and uh, we can use uh, the user can use uh, mobile app, and uh, maybe yeah, in in future we can do some reverse uh, recognition from sound to image. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was thinking, I understand, I understood what you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now you are working uh, with uh, recognition from the video to a text. Yeah. Because the current language is complicated, and you do have a foreign language vocabulary which can strike the kind of grammar and properties. Yeah. Are, there any, are there any questions? 
No questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are going to next report. Um, we have now again one report from machine learning workshop. Our present Bogdan Kopach, Roman Pelishchak, Vasil Litvinov, one again. No. Okay. Okay, okay. Then again, turn back to intelligent system workshop. And uh, it is Vasil Tesluk, Volodymyr Chernenki, Volodymyr Tsapil. No present, yes. Vasil Tesluk, Volodymyr Chernenki, Volodymyr Tsapil, Irina Kazimira. Uliana Sadova, Ivan Demedov, Natalia Andrushishin. Also excellent. Okay. Gena Boguta, Kristina Lipianina Gor Goncharenko, Leonid Nemaya, tak? Absent. Anatoly Sachenko, a company. And company. Who else? Natalia Kunonets, Volodymyr Karpiev, Yuri Sherbina, Oleg Veres, Pavlo Ilchuk, Olga Kotz. It seems to me we should do some coffee break because maybe somebody will come later, a moment later. According to our timeline, next report will be at 12.30, and I'm not sure then we should wait for 12.30. Let me do again a uh, 30-minute coffee break. To 11.30, we will start again for next reports, because not present reporters now, and we have 30 minutes time break. Let me start from present person here. Uh, you have report. Yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. Present yourself first. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's not my presentation. No, no, no. Um, now. Show me your the presentation. Uh, collection data and visualization. Okay. We'll close this one and start this. And uh, you have please mm -hmm. try works. Okay. Works. First of all, I will share screen here. This one and turn back to your report, please. Mm -hmm. uh, well, our theme is collection data and uh, visualization preventive maintenance schedule. My name is Anton Makamonov and uh, I am from Kriveri, Mushnov University. Uh, in the real production, the effective management of production is a multi phase challenge that demands uh, a delicate balance between various elements. Uh, it consists of uh, two parts, usually, from maintenance and production. Uh, for example, uh, for underground mining, uh, we have 
few different uh, teams and uh, now the first team is uh, remain management which uh, represent by um, head of main for example chief engineer and the second uh, management branch is uh, um, technicals such as uh, main mechanic and uh, district mechanic and uh, we should have to communicate between each other very well because uh, uh, we have to make a product, uh, production. Uh, and uh, our, for, for where communication depends on different factors and uh, we have to uh, make for positive positive uh, solutions uh, and uh, one of uh, decisions to improve with uh, communication and uh, improve planning of uh, next month production is uh, to create a, a CMS system or uh, maintenance uh, maintenance system with a graphical interface. Uh, investigation shows that bicycle we should have a following section of uh, preventive maintenance management uh, that uh, will show the current tasks and uh, can help you to understand what is current situation with the uh, maintenance. Uh, work for this ma management that uh, uh, realizing tasks, inventory control for uh, for the list uh, of machines or assets, assets management, and report messenger management that collects uh, data from which sections in a graphical interface. Uh, development and uh, current system. Uh, it can be it consists uh, for several parts. The third part is the uh, asset management. It consists uh, of two parts: a list of machines uh, with uh, mm, have information about machines and the equipment, and uh, the third part catalog, catalog which drives it to to our first our to the different documentation and storage. But also we should have uh, different uh, catalogs, different uh, third part catalogs, maintenance instructions, and our. Uh, and our literature for maintain. And the second part is uh, a list of available spare parts on your warehouse. Uh, work orders management also is leading to uh, uh, two areas. First, I uh, was answer for the question who will perform the task, and it's a list of mechanics, including uh, information about uh, vacations and work rates. And the uh, second uh, our second question is uh, what you shall do. And uh, here we have a top list that um, yeah. in our works you, we can uh, name orders. We can be united into projects and uh, splitting into subtasks. Uh, here you can see where. Preventive maintenance management, uh, elements of the preventive maintenance management. So for example, gun chart with uh, current task. And uh, here you can see who will perform the task, uh, uh, what, what task we should do, and what project uh, it combined in. And uh, gun chart. And the uh, working schedule where you can see. Uh, the working graph of your mechanics and uh, of course, what will uh, uh, what persons will perform tasks in the future according to vacation, sick leave, or maybe business week. Uh, inventory control. Inventory control. Uh, first pass uh, is the list. Because you should have you know what you have, uh, what assets do you have, and uh, the second part is where uh, a system 
uh, what can predict uh, the next maintenance date and drive basically on data that uh, were uh, before. Um, every non finish job block when necessary number of square parts and after finishing, right off for, from the warehouse. Uh, that's why after the balance is always present. And uh, in case as well, spare part required for common maintenance, the institute or fall below the specified threshold. The system generates some rewards. And the report management, uh, a report on the task, uh, you can see how much time was uh, spent and uh, what, uh, how much it was cost for you. It, uh, it is very actually for uh, service companies like Aperoc, like uh, Sandvik, uh, you, you have a billable column. It depends from uh, income rate and output rate for person and your profitability. Uh, and uh, uh, reports on the work schedule. Uh, here is an example. For example, uh, green is uh, a normal working time per day. Uh, yellow is uh, not enough time work, and uh, red is over uh, overhead time per day. Uh, as conclusion, we can say that the uh, computer system for organizing private imaginal scale was development and demonstrated. Uh, data collected in this system can be uh, useful for development of a pre uh, predictive maintenance schedule in future for development of our system. And the current system can be useful not only for mining, uh, but uh, for in our industries. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, any question, please? Yes. Uh, could you please tell us about the predictor? Uh, how you train it? Which model? No, no, no. It's, it's not uh, tra train it uh, um, every day. Uh, if you are talking about machines. Machine will work every day, and every day mechanic will uh, enter the working hours of this machine and uh, base it on this uh, just linear regression. You will see when near near maintenance uh, will be in future. Mm -hmm. But if you try to train uh, using some, you know, I don't know, maybe machine learning approach. It will it will create some intelligence of this system. If you don't train it, what is the intelligence here? Uh, yes, I understand. But this is this is just software system, as I understood, or maybe I missed something. Correct me, please. No, no, no. Uh, you are correct. Uh, now it's uh, the software system, but uh, we should have. Uh, we think that we should have some clients. Uh, to um, and uh, in a future we uh, want to collect uh, data about machines and to propose uh, some sensors for machines, for example, vibration sensor sensors, uh, and uh, after that we, sh we should have uh, some data sets which should show that it's normal, for example, it's normal vibration or it's abnormal vibration and to predict some uh, step of, uh, some failures of the machine. Have you talked about recommender system here, just uh, to collect this data and uh, try to construct some recommender uh, system? And uh, like pro it will be uh, like a proposal for the users uh, and uh, maybe it will be more useful than just software system where you can like uh, observe the process. Recommender system? Yes. Uh, no, one of the part of recommender is the next uh, schedule and uh, what is your, spa your spare pass available? Uh, and um, uh, 
if we are working for uh, with our mind, it's uh, very important to show uh, your chief engineer or show head of uh, mine that uh, in such days you will have a maintenance. And maintenance can uh, take uh, seven hours, maybe maybe more. And for this day, you should have uh, to plan production activity. Uh, because uh, on the mines, <laughs> every day you have a productive activity. You have to um, to explain it, and uh, this system, I think, uh, can help to planning next month product uh, production activity and uh, planning and, and helping to explain and what uh, you should have some um, some phases in production. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mother, maybe other questions now. <clears throat> I have a question. Um, is it a system not too complicated to maintenance? Uh, how many person we need to uh, every time renew data on this system? Maybe some separate person to only for, for working with this your system? Um, no, I, I think uh, it depends on your uh, on your needs because uh, this system can be helpful for, for the maintenance mechanic, uh, mining mechanics, but also for uh, service engineers in service companies uh, like like Epiros as I know. But for update every time, update okay. data every time. Uh, for example, in mining. You are divided into districts, and every district has a mechanic. And this mechanic can update data. Every mechanic will update data for uh, his responsibilities. Okay, I should pay for all this his uh, <clears throat> work, additional work. But, but maybe it will be useful when you will collect all these data for future uh, learning and prognosis mm -hmm. and so on. It could be useful as initial part of this. Yeah, system. it's an initial, initial state mm -hmm. of the system. Thank you. No other questions, no. Then thank you very much for your input. And we are going to next. Um, participant, maybe um, we break our um, square, why, why, yes, line, and maybe somebody not present here want to make report. No, then we have here present two persons here. Please, Diana Kustura. Please make your report. Collect um, mm -hmm. how name collection Kostura. data? Kostura. No, no, uh, Kostura presentation. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Moment. Well, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Diana Postura, and today I want to present a classification of dynamic object using a multiplier classic form. Mm -hmm. Not works. Moment. Try, please. Ooh, down, down, not up, but down. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, the classification task involves categorizing dynamic objects uh, such as product into different classes based on various features and characteristics. So, uh, in this study, we utilize a multiplier pair syndrome, MLP, a type of artificial neural network, as a classification task. Um, 
This research is significant in the context of military technology because uh, nowadays we have war in Ukraine and it is very uh, critical and very important task uh, to develop to find a solution for. Uh, so here we can see um, types are used uh, to uh, classify these dynamic objects. So first of all, uh, we uh, collect the data. Um, I will um, tell uh, about this in the next slides in uh, more detail. And um, so here we can see the um, results of this uh, training uh, and um, learning of uh, neural networks. We can see that the best uh, results are those um, neural networks with full hiding layers and activation boundaries, uh, and activation function. Uh, so it means uh, we choose this neural uh, network uh, to uh, classify our dynamic objects. Uh, also, we can see that uh, sphere hiding layers also shows um, high results, but um, uh, we choose two hiding layers because um, we need to uh, make us uh, not weak um, um, calculation, for example. So we need to uh, make them not very big. So it is more useful to choose um, two hiding layers. Um, so and here we can see that when we do data processing, uh, we uh, defined for data processing, including the generation of new values. So we need to find uh, the data. So we used um, pseudo-random noise uh, with a normal distribution to increase the size of training set. And here we can see the formula I used for this. Uh, then we built the uh, um, architecture for this neural network. Uh, we can see that the, um, here we have uh, the input layer of 18 uh, features. Then we see the first hiding layer that have uh, 33 uh, nails. And then we see a second hiding layers with eight layers and then we in output uh, uh, this in this hiding layers use down activation function and in output layers we have six um narrows because of six classes we want to predict and uh, in the output we have soft mass activation function and training and evaluation and so the model was trained on the training that I said we used uh, on the learning data set, 18% uh, of our uh, data set and 20% for test. And for what um, um, what project files was uh, were used in, uh, to classify, uh, we can see here uh, uh, six antipersonal, antipersonal height, slow group, and others, um, different types of this process. So here we can see uh, the model of this three-layer network. So we can see, as I said, we have input layers of 18 features. We can see them here. So uh, the most important uh, um, position of uh, um, uh, of place where um, this project is uh, allowed um, angle. We have here a big angle and small angle. It is common for um, in the words uh, because uh, and we need to change this. Uh, it is called um, SK32, and we need to uh, modify it to uh, WSG84, as I remember, uh, because it is more common for international work. And also, it is important. Um, velocity because this helps us to identify uh, what type of projectiles is coming because different uh, projectiles have different velocity. Uh, then we see hiding layers and output layers. Um, so the results. Um, 
uh, we can see that the accuracy on the test in that said is uh, 95.85%. It is a very high um, result, and it demonstrates that uh, um, classification accuracy is very high. Also, the precision is uh, about 95%, 90, 96%. And it demonstrates that the uh, um, model uh, defines um, different um, classes very well among other classes. And also you can see that the call and F1 score is also very fine. Uh, also, we can uh, talk about experimental results, um, effects of carbon layers, model performance, and check analysis. So we investigated that um, we have a fact of hidden layers. So uh, more hidden layers we have, uh, the worse uh, output we have. So it's better here to choose um, two or three hiding layers, but three hiding layers um, take a lot of computational um, process, so we choose uh, two hiding layers, uh, and it uh, shows us a high model performance. And also we um, performed a shape analysis because it can show us uh, what features, what input features, uh, in fact, um, the results, the, the most, the uh, much, much. And so we can hear, uh, we can see here a sharp analysis for feature importance. So as I said, the most um, critical and most um, important features that in fact the results of uh, our neural network classification is velocity, um, angle, and position. And uh, shock analysis was um, used such um, um, such parameters like um, shape assemble function because we have uh, our data set for um, 2000 um, rows and it, uh, it is a lot of rows so we choose only uh, high controls to uh, analyze which um, features are important. And also um, we use kernel explainer and it is used uh, to uh, also predict this um, most impacted features. Um, so we can talk about speed and angle. Uh, if we increase, for example, speed, um, by one unit, we have um, output of three units. So when we increase um, this um, features, uh, it impacted a lot of our output results. And in conclusion, what we can say is that um, this um, narrow network with two hidden layers and common situation function uh, show um, a high result because we have uh, accuracy of um, classification for 95% and other um, like decision recall and F1 score also show a high result. Also, we defined uh, the most uh, important features using chef analysis. It is attitude, speed, and angle. And uh, also, we uh, done a lot of work, uh, important work, because uh, in terms of uh, work in Ukraine, it is very important uh, to use. So that's all. Thank you for attention, and I'm waiting for your answers. Uh, questions. Thank you very much. Uh, please, please, question. I have a few questions. So could you please tell us about the particular problem or task which you're trying to solve using this approach? or at least uh, you tested this approach because it sounds quite abstract and uh, many things will be more clear if you uh, provide some example. And uh, then I'll have more questions about the size of uh, training set and uh, what approach did you use for the training and so on. Because um, 
it is not clear why you use this uh, kind of network. Um, why uh, we, we, uh, did you compare this uh, approach with similar or other approach and so on? Because this uh, report was like very abstract for me. So if you can uh, clarify some of this, it will be more uh, understandable. Thank you. So we're asking questions about the stuff from the. Uh, first of all, we talked with um, army, with some uh, people, and uh, they have problems that they have a um, system called uh, Zopar, and um, they have um, problems that they can detect uh, projectiles, but when they explode. And then we need a uh, solution to detect these uh, projectiles and in the real time, in online. So when the projectiles is fly, so then you can detect them and know what to do, what to, um, um, what solution they need to use. And uh, we saw this data from the zone part, but we can't use the data because it is um, confidential. And we find a watch to um, uh, to uh, create this. Um, to create this data set by using uh, this uh, this formula uh, to random make this uh, to generate this uh, data set. So we actually saw the real data and we know what we should um, produce. So like um, we know which uh, features we need to, uh, to generate and other. So um, it is real. I mean, um, you created artificial uh, data sample yes, uh, yes. looking to the real data sample. Yes, yes so it's clear. It, it's clear. Uh, then uh, we uh, then we tested uh, different approaches. So um, in this um, article, we uh, trained. Um, Neural networks, for example, for different uh, um, hiding layers, two, three, four, and five. Also, we choose different um, activation function like the rule logistic and uh, um, rule, uh, logistic and balance. And also, we try to uh, um, use um, decision tree classifier, uh, support vector machine, and um, random forest, but they show not very high uh, performance, about 85%. So it was not um, very good to choose them because they uh, performed not a very high result. So we, um, so I choose to present only um, if we have um, very high results. So in the article, it is described that the other, like the CDT classifier, others uh, models show not very good uh, results. I think I answered your question. What, what is the size of the training yeah, set? South mm -hmm. yes. uh, Okay. Uh, have you have you? And we are uh, um, just for learning uh, eighty percent and for our test twenty percent. So, so okay. Uh, did you did you summarize some <laughs> suggestion that the particular me methods provide uh, the classification for some? Time. I mean, you have an estimation, so you can say this approach is better because it's quicker than other ones. And what about the retraining? When you have a new data and uh, you need to retrain the network uh, to be uh, adaptable for this new data, because if the training is, if you uh, if your data will uh, extend the tech, uh, input. Uh, so you need to retrain the model uh, to be confident that uh, this model uh, knows uh, new data in the data set. Uh, this um, problem will occur when we uh, will have um, much more uh, classes. If we have six classes, it will um, classify them okay because we tested, uh, for example, I tested it. Um, if we choose uh, 500, uh, rows and train the model and then it is uh, 1,500. Uh, it also uh, shows the same results, so it's not matter uh, how bigger will be the 
uh, that I said, but it will impact if we have bigger classes. So, for example, if we have seven classes, it will be a problem, and we should retrain and change hyperparameters and others. Okay. And I can tell you about the hyperparameters because you um, asked for more clarification. So, when we um, train this uh, neural network, uh, we uh, choose hyperparameters, and this um, uh, MOP is optimized. So we uh, used a solver as an atom um, to optim optimization algorithm. Also, uh, regularization parameter, we choose uh, alpha as a 0 0.0001, uh, number of samples per gradient of the we choose part size is set to uh, learn rate, uh, we choose by uh, 0 0.001. And a maximum number of iterations uh, ten thousand, and it um, um, I performed a lot of hyperparameters, and they uh, shows different um, outputs, and exactly this hyperparameter shows the best result. So it would be great to see them on the slide. <laughs> so maybe in the future. Uh, yes, but it is also it is all mentioned in the article. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from our tutorial? No. Thank you very much for a good report. Then we are going to next uh, speaker. Um, I see Katerina Doroshkevich is ready to, to make a report. Am I, am I right? Yes, you are right. I do. I do ready to report. So, uh, shall I share my screen or? Um, yeah, please, please share your screen. All right. It works. Um, I'm not sure, but I will try to do something to to share. Uh, it's submission 28. Uh, okay, okay. It's all good. You can start, but I, I now... One moment, one moment, please. I will um, exchange my screens here. All right. So before I will start, thank you for this opportunity to participate to this conference online because due to my internship uh, in Anglia Ruskin University, fortunately, uh, not, 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 not able to attend this conference in person. So thank you so much for this online, online opportunity for the participants like, like I am. Please um, start. All right, so um, this, is, this is the uh, a presentation for the article by topic modeling of tactical actions of the enterprise foundation and argumentation of use in the condition of European integration performed by Nestor Spak, Katarina Doroshkevich and Helena Kovtok and presenting by Katarina Doroshkevich, it's me. So uh, yeah, um, I, I would like to, um, <clears throat> to come back here to the topic of um, Russian invasion into the territory of Ukraine and to the topic of the necessity of development of the our Ukrainian enterprises in this condition. So um, in order to enhance the effectiveness of the enterprise management in the condition of Russia-Ukrainian war, in the condition of European integration of the Ukraine, the articles argue for the use of multi-criteria optimization modeling and evaluation of the tactical instruments of economic development applied by enterprises within a period of up to one year. Patterns and trends identified during the modeling are recommended for use in making rational management decisions regarding the priority utilization of tactical actions in economic development. The article outlined the procedure for evaluating tactical instruments of economic development in the context of European integration, which involved the application of mathematical and software methods and tools corresponding to the Vicor, Topsy's different generation of Electro Prometheus methods. 
uh, based on the critical analysis, the choice of two methods, like top and electro first generation is justified. And also we provided the practical assessment uh, on, on <clears throat> it was carried out at the um, leather company uh, Svitanok LLC, which proved the effectiveness of following uh, actions like participation in conferences, forums, branding, or export promotion. So for this research, we set uh, following goals. Um, uh, probably I wouldn't I wouldn't read the whole set of the goals right now. I will start already. I, I'm, I'm I'm remember about the timeline, so I will start with the first goal to emphasize the importance of using tactical tools of enterprise management in the condition of European integration process, which are applied in time period of up to one year. So. As, as we know, the modern enterprises are operating in stable condition triggering by the full scale invasion of Russian Federation into the territory of Ukraine. And I don't think it's necessary to talk now about the missiles attacks, uh, about the partial occupation of the some regions of Ukraine. All these threats are facing us every day, basically. And also something that I want to highlight that even more challenges uh, also, also a lot of challenges for the Ukrainian enterprise. We have like the immigration of the Ukrainian population, disruption of supply and chain uh, for goods, lost the parts of export potential in the occupied territories. But in the same time, these events, they invigorated the course of European integration process and it redirected uh, enterprise towards actively engaging in the European integration and well known that Ukraine uh, got the status of the candidate of the EU membership. Um, the active enterprise engagement in the European condition necessitating the use of appropriate economic development tools. And here a bit uh, discussion question is, um, are we able to predict the um, circumstances for the period more than one year? Should, should we still deal with the strategic goals and follow um, the established strategy of the enterprise? Or maybe it's better for now uh, deal with the uh, tactical tools they would, that we developed for the period of uh, up to one year. So is uh, still tactics just the fancy word of management or maybe it's uh, relevant in this uh, circumstances? Uh, the goal number two, uh, to argue the use of multi-criteria optimization modeling and the evaluation of tactical tools as economic development. Uh, here, uh, I want just to, to highlight some features of the tactical tools of economic development. They are characterized by the certain level of the performance. Um, most of the tactical innovative tools um, do not have a direct impact on the economic results on the enterprise, basically. Based on this, we are not able to evaluate the efficiency of, of them by comparing the benefits obtained from their application with the cost. But in the same time, the tactical tools of economic development may have varying level of effectiveness and the impact on the social sphere and the condition of European integration, contributing uh, to the resolution of social issue, improving the organizational processes of the enterprise, which should be appropriately evaluated. Um, the selection, utilization, evaluation, and subsequent application of tactical innovative tools and the condition of European integration uh, basically um, occur at the environment with of uncertainty and risk that I just uh, mentioned. So therefore, in the process of the economic evaluation, a decision-making methodology should be employed, which involves selecting the best option among alternative sets of uh, tactical innovative tools um, based um, on the defined set of criteria in the condition of European integration. This corresponds to the task of multi-criteria analysis, which involves weighting of level um, of performance of each uh, tactical innovative tools in order to identify the one characterized by a lower level of risk. Um, yeah, so as method of multi-criteria decision making designed to evaluate to, to achieve these goals, to evaluate tactical innovative tools capable satisfying uh, the input parameters and established goals, we considered vicar autopsies, um, uh, some different generation of the electro method and different generation of the prometheus method. 
uh, and we offer some uh, sequence of the evaluation that will take following steps as the defining the purpose of setting tags, the information support, the selection of the method, application of selected method, and the generalization of the evaluation and making an optimal managerial decision regarding to the further utilization. <laughs> Yes, so um, let me discuss a bit more the stage number four, uh, because uh, all, all these methods, this, this I just mentioned, the Vicor, the Topsys, the Electra, they have some advantages and disadvantages, some uh, strong and the weak positions. And based on the relatively simple, um, so we take into account how relative and simple is to perform the calculation in order to achieve the established goals and over to satisfy the input parameter. So uh, we decided to use, of course, the TOPSIS method. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes, um, and we, I will discuss it more a bit uh, in detail on, on, the, on the particular example. So the, the obtained results uh, haven't been relevant and the ratings uh, of the elements uh, that we got uh, haven't been agreed. So in this case, we decided just to top up the um, following procedure by adding some additional electro first generation method. And um, yeah, so in, in this case, uh, another challenge that we had, it was to, to summarize the results of both of the methods. Um, yeah, so let me move to the goal number four to carry out practical use of recommended models. So first here you can see the result of the top test method that I just mentioned. It's relatively simple to perform calculation and allows for simultaneous, uh, simultaneously considering maximum proximity to the maximum positive solution and the greatest distance for the ideal negative solution. But um, as a result, we just... Uh, uh, got three different ranks of the uh, tactical tools. Um, sorry, I forgot uh, just to highlight that all this calculation been provided uh, using the data from leather company uh, Svetanok LLC. Um, in the practical activity of the company, some tactical tools like targeting, branding, uh, participation on roundtables is widely used. So um, something that we just did, uh, we, rely on the expert method and we tried to evaluate these tactical tools for the enterprise and in the as, as the result we uh, got some three writings uh, based on the maximum positive and the maximum negative solution and by calculating the distance to all this solution and as you can see on on the figure on uh, the right hand side compression for the rank of tactical instrument haven't been agreed and we just got different rank and we've been a bit confusing about the result. Uh, based on this, we uh, it was necessary to use the additional electro method first generation, which you can see um, a bit more difficult to provide. So first we calculate the normalized wages matrix, and then uh, it was necessary to perform the dominance matrix and non-dominance matrix based on the obtained result uh, to identify the intensity of domination of non-domination, each of the tactical instruments. And in the end, uh, just summarize it with a rank. Um, here I can highlight that if the method is lack of uh, is free from mistake, uh, the using the intensity of domination and not domination will give you the same rank of the tactical instrument uh, that we will like it to to get it for for the first try. So uh, yeah, the next challenge was the consolidation, the summarizing of the results, which we decided to do using the sum of ranking and use the average rank, but not just, just the simple average. We just include the number that it's not equal to zero in both of the ranks. And uh, so we, it, as the conclusion, uh, considering the established evaluation criteria, um, out of 10 analyzed tactical tools, the most effective one was the number three, two, and eight, but in the same time, less effective was tactical instrument number seven. So in the same time, we have, we set some key discussion point 
for our research. So first of all, as I just mentioned about the tactics, um, working, uh, so uh, this, um, discovering these topics for many years, I just find out but that unfortunately it's lack of research according to the tactics of enterprise. So uh, more, more, more developed topic basically is the strategy. But in my opinion that in, really in these circumstances, it's just hard to deal with the timeline that longer from from one year and it's maybe appropriate more appropriate approach to focus on the period of one to up to one year that corresponds to the tactic tools uh in the same time next kind of discussion point is the procedure of evaluating so something that we did we just used two primary methods like the white core and we top it up with the first generation of Electra. Yeah, so it's really discussion point because uh, maybe we can add another method. So additional method number three, or maybe it's just um, will be more useful just to use Electra one. So probably it will be the direction of the further research and we will compare some a different pair of the method on, or maybe we decided to develop it with additional method number three. Yeah, ju just to compare the result. And of course we are paying attention of the simplify uh, of, of the, um, with, with the simple uh, to perform calculation. So uh, yeah, we will look on this as well. And the next key discussion point that is set for, that we set for our article, it's that, the effectiveness of using the recommended methods can be increased as the result of using software tools in the artificial intelligence system. So of course the software tools and the artificial intelligence system been involved, but the main calculation been provided using the Microsoft uh, Excel environment because um, it, it, it wasn't possible to uh, use any online services according to, to the problem of the of the article. So yeah, it's also the direction of the further research, try to utilize the calculation and to um, maybe decrease the use of the expert uh, evaluation by adding some um, intelligence system. Uh, thank you for your attention. I will be happy to answer the question. Uh, thank you very much. Um, have you any question from from here? No, uh, I cannot see. Um, sorry, I try to to realize um, <clears throat> if um, you have a good, very systemized approach, and uh, you have ten, for example, ten. Uh, tactical tools, but yes. do you think it's heavily depend on weights for each uh, tool using, uh, I can wait in. Yeah. This yeah. Uh, uh, other uh, way is your model will be not very correct. Yeah, so uh, of course, um, um, as I just mentioned, unfortunately, it's not possible to provide is just um, just rely on the intelligence system, the expert evaluation, uh, the expert uh, decided about the wages of the each of the tactical tools of economic development. Yeah, of course, it's the weak position of the model, and we will try to utilize it as as, as much as is possible. But unfortunately, now we just uh, couldn't find some. Uh, so some some tool some tools to provide it, yeah. And any any of this method that we consider to use, so they they all uh, as a part of the method, of course the um, the the wages of of the criteria sh should be used. It should be involved this this part of the evaluation, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, maybe other no no other questions. Thank you very much for your participation. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome next time. Yes. Thank you. We are going to next reporter. And uh, we are quite ahead in our timeline. And uh, we already works in uh, a line of 1230.
And I should ask again, uh, are the present Vasil Tesluk, Volodymyr Chernenky, Volodymyr Tsarev, Irina Kazimira, no present, yes. Uh, Ulyana Sadova, Demidov, Andrew Sheshin, Lutsishin, no present, okay. Um, next, Boguta, Lipianina, Goncharenko, Nema Boguti, Nema. Okay. Then we are going to Leslav Kobilu. He's present. Please. Do you give uh, given me your presentation? Okay, let me try to. Then we want a few minutes for this. Mm -hmm. This one or not? This one. 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 This moment I, I should share my screen so, 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 trivial mm -hmm. no Why not duplicate screen? Screen. Я можу вернути стрім, має вернути. Звідки курва? Це Це штука працює. Має працювати зараз у ніколи. One moment, please. Mm, так. Як пока анімейшн слайдшоу. Try to use down, down, нижня кнопка, не верхня. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Lasso Kubeluk and I'm a PhD student of uh, system analysis at Virtual Tech National University. And today I want to introduce you my topic, my research paper of the, of the team uh, designing the application for monitoring the Mediterranean spoken language. Uh, so short introduction that all of you know that uh, all begin with the word. The word is anything, is a key of communication, is uh, one of important tools, uh, all begin with the word. So keeping our word in a good mood, in a good control, uh, help us to be uh, good people in a real world. So uh, if we go to the statements and the justification of the problem, first of all, let's take a look for the place of application of the system. So the system can be used in uh, different uh, learning areas like uh, universities, schools, even in hospitals that just to analyze the patient's uh, language. Um, if we go to the rationale uh, for the development and implementation of the system, so 
the development is implementation of searching, for example, the bad words in our language. So users speak and the system detect uh, all unnecessary words or in the paper it's called uh, Z words. Uh, as we know, like it can be uh, the bad Russian word or some bad Ukrainian words, etc. And accepted facts of the implementation of the system. So to keep uh, to keep our language, I can say clean, to keep it in a good mood. And also the people around us also will feel good. Um, if we go to the conceptual models, just shortly brief uh, how the system work, uh, would work like. So first, uh, how we receive the speech from every audio device, from microphones, using phones, or for example, the prototype version will be on the PC. And then we check the speech, again, the database of uh, unwanted words, so user can uh, attach, edit this list of words, and then if, I, if it finds the bad words, it can alert the user with the sound, or for example, if it will be on the phone, with the vibration. Here, what we need to consider the building the system. So the first one is the accuracy in speech. Uh, speech. So it should analyze speech quickly and uh, precisely. Second one is the compatibility. So it should work on the different uh, devices and platforms. Uh, the third one is privacy and security. So all the data of users should uh, should be protected because uh, the program, the tool, will have the possibility to store the audio files of spoken language. Uh, adaptability, so it means that uh, it should handle different speech styles and slangs, uh, user friendly interface, and updates and support. So, here we have the simple use case diagram of the application. We have two actors the user and the administrator. If we talk about the administrators, so we should just uh, keep a program alive, so update the database and update the software. If we talk about the user, so here, the first stage is authenticate the user. So user provides his login and the uh, uh, password using voice, only the password. Uh, and then here has three possibilities to update the dictionary, to add words, delete words, check the list of words, to analyze recording. So to upload the, uh, some spoken language recording, and then it will be converted to the audio and uh, identifying the words. Or a user prepared to use the analyze live speech so it means that uh, the program starts to work and uh, it converted speech to text in the live way. Uh, also, detected the word and providing signal if necessary. So in the next slide, you can see the sequence diagram, uh, the process how the program will work. So first go authentication, application provides the access, a user starting updating the dictionary, uh, then the system updates the dictionary. Uh, uh, show updated list of words, and then user select analysis. So uh, application uh, requests to provide a speech. Speech is provided, it's converted to the text, finding words, and report if there are matches with the D words. If we go next, so after this uh, diagrams, we are trying to find the best uh, technologies of recognition of Ukrainian language. There are a lot of them in the internet. You can uh, find them all, but especially the main problem is to recognize the Ukrainian language with the slangs, with the, some uh, possibilities. So here we have the advantages and disadvantages. In the future research, we will, in the future slides, we will see uh, the comparison of the top three main uh, technologies. The first one will be the Google Cloud speech to text with the high accuracy uh, supporting the Ukrainian language. Uh, then the Mozilla Big Speech with its open access and the fact that it can, can be used offline without internet access, and also the Chaldeans with the same approach. So the next phase will have the hierarchy analysis method for decision making regarding tools of for recognition of Ukrainian language. So the goal is to choose the best model. The criteria will be the uh, recognition, security, processing speed, language support, cost, scalability. And the alternatives will be our three technologies, so Google Cloud Speech, Mozilla Deep Speech, and the Cloud. Next way, we will build uh, our metrics. Uh, so the first metric is the metrics of experts evaluation. So we compare our criteria, and then we will build our metrics for um, 
our alternatives, the more population you will see in our, in my papers, and the result of our planning of the method, we will see that alternative one have the greatest score, so we will choose to loop out fish attacks IP as the best one. Moving next, so deployment the environment, just talk about it. So at the first prototype of our program, we'll be using the Python language. So we will use the Visual Studio code as the simplest one, just to try to run our code to see how it works. At the first stage, or also we have the uh, another way to use the PyCharm, the blind text, and you pitch on Go then, and here we have the main modules, as we mentioned uh, before. So the user application and the registration model, the audio recording and analysis model and results, live speech analysis model, work uh, list correction model, a model for playback of audio files, and also the data analysis creation and display model. If we go uh, further and speak about the live speech analysis, so here we have the Google Cloud the speech API, uh, the word matching, the continuous processing. So it means that uh, we have our real speech in the real time. Uh, it's dividing by chunks. Each chunks are analyzed in the live uh, time. Um, so we have. Mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and it's analyzed in the live. And also they are letting the user so we can provide different signals, vibrations, if it will be necessary. For the data anal analysis and the visualization, so we have data storage used in our system. At the beginning, we use the Excel as the basic one, but further we can go to the online databases. For the data analysis stages, so it analyzes all the speech, detecting different parts of words, detecting uh, synonyms, detecting the words which uh, are the same, but we have the different meanings. And also the visualization part, so user can visualize uh, his speech and analyze, for example, top, top 10 words she uh, or he used approximately for the full time. Uh, so here we have the result of the program execution. So uh, closer, we have the our uh, recording start. Uh, the use user provide the recording, and at the end we will see the uh, the rough finding uh, works, which was uh, set up at the beginning by the logging of the user. And also the next, so for example, user can see the top ten words which are used for the full time uh, with such kind of graphics. So in conclusion, this uh, application, the beginning of creation of this application was to help people to be more polite, to be more uh, clear in their language, or and the further research can be more focused on the different, for example, diseases in the hospital where uh, we have problem with our spoken language. So this uh, application will also help with this. So that's all from my side. Thanks. Thank you very much. Very interesting report again. Please, question. Uh, can you tell about uh, use cases? As I understand, uh, it's for training speeches, so for example, before conference. Is it for use? Yes, or? yes, you can use also this speech and analyze, for example, if you have a lot of words. If you uh, talk about the Ukrainian language, yeah, so we have our speech and we think that, okay, we use a lot of words, ta, okay, and etc. So we can analyze this and, for example, make some decision in the future just to avoid it. And the second question uh, is a list of uh, break words uh, is, uh, can be set up for every user person. Yes, yes, it can be set up or, for example, in the future, the program can have the already set up list and user can choose it or it can put it by the user menu for every user person. Okay, please. So uh, if I understood you correctly, uh, you mean that you have a dictionary with the break stop words or yes something else, and uh, when you analyze the speech using some technology which uh, does for you this recognition part, uh, you just match uh, the recognized uh, text uh, splitting by words with your yes. dictionary. And then you say, oh, this sentence contains uh, some bad words. Yeah, and this is not okay. But what about uh, 
the semantic, I don't know, between the words in the sentences, it can be uh, so easy. Uh, what about if this is, if the speech is like framing part of the lesson, or I don't know where the bad example is like an, an example, yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, uh, something like that, and uh, this uh, simple match uh, will not work uh, clearly, yes. and. Uh, uh, one more thing: uh, this context of the world. So we are so uh, we have uh, in Ukrainian uh, language like uh, the words with uh, um, many meanings yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And what about yeah. this? So so regarding the first point, which is context uh, of the, for example, having the bad example is a good example. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't mean to use this program in such way. So it basically, as a person mentioned before, just to training to yourself to analyze your speech to training. But uh, yeah, I think the future uh, research can be uh, improve can have improvement on it. And uh, for the second one, so I think it will be added in the future just to have a connection of words. If you say that the words have two meaning, so it can be like uh, additional dictionary with. Uh, the list of connected words which are meaning the same because the this word can uh, or i don't know i think it's more with i don't know how to say in english nahlos to work with the nahlos to work with the speech uh, how the word is uh pronunciation correctly so i think the research uh, the future research will be more aimed on this topic so have you compared your approach with some uh, such software like grammarly so uh, maybe you know that uh, you can use this uh, plugin for uh, Google Translator in the same time. So Google Translator provides you some translation using uh, some Google technologies for this. And in the same time, Grammarly provides you uh, some stylish corrections uh, and uh, emphasize some mistakes, uh, uh, in particular stylistic mistakes, and uh, also it emphasizes the mood of the sentences and the style of the sentence. Is it uh, like a, a scientific sentence? Is it like spoken language or something else? And uh, it combined the approach, but have you compared this? Uh, no, exactly no. It's just the beginning of my research, the beginning of analyzing of such kind of problem and creating such kind of design so the future research, uh, research will so, be kind of I, I suggest you yeah, to, 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 to look it because uh, it, it works for English but uh, maybe for other languages but I use for English yeah. so okay. maybe system, the main problem is the Ukrainian language yeah yeah but you can uh, study the experience yeah and use it for your future development thank you thank you other questions no I have questions. Is uh, um, train it directly for Ukrainian language? Uh, so it basically uh, uh, for Ukrainian language. Yeah. When I I want to uh, retrain to Polish, it will be too difficult. Uh, no, it are selected in the settings. Settings. Okay. On the settings, uh, you no need uh, vocabulary special. Yeah, because we use the ready-made libraries in the Python code, so. I think oh, it, it depends because it's the PC version of the program, mm -hmm. so we, we use libraries. But at, we, we will, when we will have it on the mobile phones or in other platforms, so I think we will have another approach. Okay, it's software work on mobile phone? But currently on the PC. On the PC. Yeah. And how it complicated to uh, reprogram to, to mobile phone? Uh, I think it's not a problem just to have a good knowledge of the JavaScript and the languages using phones. So. Many JavaScript. Okay. Um, when some um, new words abs uh, absent in uh, vocabulary of uh, this uh, Python, how to include new words in, in vocabulary? So uh, I think in the future, the user will have the possibility to upgrade the dictionary, the beginning version of the dictionary, mm -hmm. and to upload their own words they use. Okay, interesting. Can I also ask the question? As as the economist, I just have to say, how did you how how are you planning to earn the money? It will be some additional like function. It will be some membership, or you will sell this app. Uh, in the future, I think 
it will be free because every people in Ukraine needs such kind of application just to control themselves and their languages. So basically we use free technologies and we provide the free application for all users. Yeah, but also there, there is always the possibility to earn some money by adding some additional function uh, that apparently are, are not free. So we, we, it's, we can see it every day by using different apps. So they just offer us some subscription, some uh, additional options. So you can also think a little bit in this direction, probably. Yeah. Thank so you. It should be useful too. Okay, no, no other questions. Then thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your card. Then we are going to next reporter. Um, who will be next? We have Zoran Repchak, Mikhail Kopilets. You are ready? Mikhail Kopilets. We also have flash card here. Yeah. Okay. What is B? Sorry, one moment. We need time to open your presentation. Which one it should be? It's here. Um, this? Too many presentations. Yes. It should be. Yeah, this one. Yeah, let's open this one. Mm -hmm. Я по нему запускаю на Саше. Все, я запускал, запускал. Уже три раза запустил. Так, момент, момент. I should start here. And I, I should share screen, sorry. Here. I think. Maybe please try uh, up yeah, down. Works. Works. Please. Yeah, okay. You are... uh, my name is Mikhail Topolets. I am a PhD student in the information system, information technology systems. Uh, I would like to present today the work which called comparative analysis of DQN uh, and DPO algorithms in UAV optical avoidance to dimensional solutions. Uh, so UAV, also known as a drones, it's widely used uh, around the world. Uh, it's used in different industry, in agro industry, in uh, cinematography, and also we all know it can be used for military purposes. And the most challenging things with UAV is to make these vehicles uh, to move autonomously, so which means autonomous navigation. Uh, there are different problems related to that. It's UAV control, which means uh, it includes uh, the right movement and also stabilization, fast planning uh, to plan uh, the optimal pass from the one uh, point to another, uh, blocking. It's also when we have the uh, drone swarm with multiple drones and we try to uh, control them and obstacle avoidance. Obstacle avoidance, it's a, it's a problem that contains two parts. The first part is uh, to recognize the obstacle and the second part is uh, to avoid this obstacle. And the second part we are going to focus on our presentation today, we try to solve this reinforcement learning algorithms. So our research objectives are, uh, the first one is uh, develop a simplified two-dimensional simulation environment to run the simulations. Second one is to apply two 
uh, famous algorithms. First one is GQ network. The second one is proximal policy optimization algorithm. And then uh, investigate the impact of different activation functions on the learning efficiency and evaluate and compare the performance of these algorithms. And finally, uh, compare the navigation strategy. So let's uh, look briefly on those two algorithms. The GPU network algorithm is based on the neural networks, which are Q-value based, uh, which means that these networks, they are produced the Q values for each pair uh, state and action. So for particular state, we are going to have the uh, number of different uh, Q values, and we try to choose the best one in that way. Uh, we're going to know what action the agent on our case it's a drone will do. And also this algorithm has a, a experience replay. This is a um, this is a buffer which interacts with the environment and try to collect different state action and rewards and then just forming a batch which will use to train the network. Uh, in general just Let's talk about, let's just, uh, as we can see, it, this deep Q network, it's just based on the network with uh, the Q, this is the Q value network, based on the Q value networks. And the, another algorithm, this is proximal policy optimization, it's based on the uh, policy-based network. So traditionally it produces the policies and this policy means, uh, the distribution of uh, different probabilities of taking some actions. And the, our uh, algorithm, it also approach the uh, way with actor critic. So which means there we have the two networks, one the actor, second is the critic. The actor network produces the action that we need to uh, apply to the, our agent and the critic will, uh, this is, the uh, Q value network, like from the previous algorithm, and uh, it will uh, produce how good that action was. And this also a sample memory, as you can see, but it's a bit different from experience replay, uh, because the sample memory it collects data only for the one episode. By the episode, it means the number of steps and uh, what uh, the agent is doing, or it can be. A, um, the sequence of steps for the each simulation uh, from the starting point until collision happens. So I just want to point it out, there's two different algorithms. First is off policy algorithm and second one is on policy algorithm. We also, for our experiment, we decided to choose a couple of activation functions. The main goal was to see how uh, limited and non-limited function effects on our uh, experiment. The S and non-limited function, we choose uh, real U and Wiki real U. Uh, the first one doesn't have an upper limit, and the second one doesn't have limits. It goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. And as a limited activation function, we chose sigmoid and uh, hyperbolic tangent function. Here, as you can see, it's a simplified uh, two-dimensional environment. This is how it looks. Uh, that environment was developed with the Python language, uh, with the by game library. Uh, the important learning algorithm, I also want to point out that we didn't develop an extraction. We use this table baseline library. It already has some fine-tuned algorithms. So if we look at that environment, what we can see, it has a borders. It has a circular of uh, obstacles, but that obstacles can also overlap each other at the same time, it creates more complex objects to avoid. And it has a drone with 180 degree vision and with some radius. So what can drone can do? It, it can move forward, rotate to the left and right, uh, can also detect the obstacles, recognize them, and uh, also recognize collisions. Uh, what hyperparameters and reward function we define for our experiment. So we need to define the actions and observation space or state in other words, and reward function. 
So the action we defined as uh, values from zero to 99. And from that, we can take the angle and distance. The angle, uh, we want to know if a drone can rotate to the left or right. And distance, this is the distance that drone can go uh, for the one time step. So also means is a speed. So, uh, and here, as you see the formula, we can just simply divide by 10 and take the integer part. If it's less than five, then it's action turning to the left on some number of degree. Uh, and uh, if it's more than five, is 10 minus that value, it is turning to the right. And the reminder is uh, our distance. Also, the observation space are represented as a uh, first. 10 closest obstacles, what drop can see within his uh, vision radius. And the, each obstacle are represented, is represented as uh, three values. And uh, the first two, it's a directional vector, X and Y. And L, this is the distance to that obstacle. And that all values are normalized. As a reward function, uh, Initially, it was defined as a minus 10 for the collision and 0 0.01 multiple by distance for any other cases. But then during uh, some series of uh, experiments, uh, we find out that sometimes the model decided to stay and not move at all because uh, zero reward is better than minus <laughs> than negative number. And uh, because if collision happens earlier, early. And also uh, there's an, another problem, sometimes drawn just in around the one point. So we decided to punish this behavior, this uh, uh, negative reward minus 0 0.01. So in case if it's distance equal zero or angle not equal zero. So following this uh, reward function, the best strategy for the drone, it looks like to move forward uh, move as fast as is possible and rotate, meaning to uh, to the left or right only in case if uh, it leads to a collision. So what was our experiment steps? Uh, the first one we developed the simulated environment, so we need to pre we prepare it uh, for uh, eight scripts for each algorithm, for each activation function. Then we've regenerated uh, environments for simulation because we need to regenerate to just make sure that every script uses uh, the same uh, sequence of environments. And that environments are just, as you saw on the previous uh, slide with uh, the random obstacles. And then execute simulation, plugging all parameters, and collision happens, we proceed to the next generated environment. And we just terminate this simulation uh, after one million iterations. Uh, after this, we can analyze some parameters and compare navigation strategies. So here's uh, our results. Here we can see the how average reward was changing uh, for each activation function. So there is uh, some uh, performance jump uh, for sigmoid function, but at the end of the day, it behaves as the same uh, as other functions. Uh, but just look at the numbers, uh, as you can see, it's very with big zero. So it's, uh, most of the activation functions may pass less than zero. But if you look at proximal policy optimization average reward, it looks much better. It has higher values uh, of average reward for each activation function. It sometimes even hit 170. But and now we, we can compare with some uh, metrics. So we define a couple of metrics. Uh, so we have the average steps per each episode and average distance per each episode. And also we want to know what the percentage of full stops or turning action in dependent with uh, in comparison with the other uh, actions, average speed and average reward. If we look a bit uh, at activation functions, we can see that sigmoid and hyperbolic tangent it performed better, but 
For the GPU network, this is sigmoid. For proximal policy optimization, it's tangent. But uh, all the way around, it doesn't work in this way because tangent for GPU network is has less numbers, for example, like for real view and wiki real view. So we couldn't say that that group of uh, activation functions, they are limited, it's better or it's worse. Uh, but if we compare these two algorithms, GPU network and proximal policy optimization, we could see that that's numbers, uh, it's huge for proximal policy optimization. We could see, for example, the, the first column, the average steps per episode, it's almost 3,000 in comparison to, to 200 for GPU network, and the same with the distance per episode, which means that this drawn with PPO model, it lives longer, and since it should perform better. And also, but when we look at the percentage of full stops and turning actions, we will see that GPU network has higher values. It has one, two, three uh, percentage of full stops, for example, in comparison with uh, proximal policy optimization, which is zero, one, zero, zero, eight, or seven. Uh, then we want to uh, we want to find out what uh, navigation strategies of these models. So we took two training models and placed into some cell with obstacles. Uh, uh, but distance between those obstacles is just enough to pass through them. But and as we can see that a uh, GPU network behaves in different ways. It's more maneuvering. It's trying to fly around the obstacles uh, and it just interacts more with the obstacles. At the same time, the proximal policy optimization, it works in different ways. Uh, it's more safe. It uh, all, all time then can notice, uh, it notice uh, the obstacle, it tries to run away. So that's why it's staying inside the cell. At some point, he can, it, it can move out and just find another safe place, just move it inside it. So what conclusions of this experience we can do? So for this particular task for obstacle avoidance, uh, for our environment, the, the main goal was to survive. So these two models perform in different ways. The proximal policy optimization uh, model, it works, perform better because it has even better uh, metric values uh, for in worst case. Uh, so the worst case is better than the best case in GPU network. If you look at different activation functions, we couldn't say uh, that um, some group of functions they are better or they are worse, but it's probably it it, it worth to try uh, different uh, in other experiments. And also regarding those two models, um, they just have a different ways uh, to navigate. So it's probably it worth to use both of them, but for different type of tasks. So in the environments where we have a cloudy environment with a lot of obstacles, that probably was to try a GPU network. And for the proximal policy optimization, it's better to use uh, environments with the less amount of obstacles and the distance between them. And that's different in behavior. It explains why GQN has such uh, numbers in our comparison table, that's because it interacts more with the obstacles. And I think this findings, and it's a good starting point for the future uh, researchers, especially in three-dimensional simulations. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, any questions, please? Can you come back to previous pages? Okay, uh, please, uh, thank you. And uh, what is the uh, gray gray area? Is uh, it's uh, a transmission? Transmission. Yeah. And uh, but uh, one camera have such uh, one one hundred and eighty degrees vision. Uh, yeah, there is some such cameras that 
Well, and there's a different type of cameras. Some of them, they have a 60 degree, 120, and I know a 180 degree also it's exist. Uh, and uh, would you use uh, only monoclonal vision, or maybe you used to want to, uh, in future mm -hmm. to use some in our centers like uh, range uh, finder, for example? And that also can be used for different purposes because there are some sensors, for example, it's a lunar sensor, and uh, uh, it's more expensive. So it's dependent on purpose as well. What you use. If you want to make it cheaper, it's probably better to use monocular vision uh, uh, type. If you want something more expensive, we can even consider a lidar system. But uh, for, for, for that research, we just, as I mentioned, on one of my previous slides, uh, the obstacle avoidance, it tried to solve two problems. The first one is uh, detect the obstacle, a second one to avoid them. So we just made a, made a statement that we know how to detect them and we try to avoid. But this first problem can be solved in a different way, as you mentioned, with monocular or some other things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, what uh, kind of obstacles uh, did you consider? I mean, uh, are they static always or dynamic? They, they are static always, but for every environment, they are generated randomly from the environment. Yeah, okay, but you didn't consider the uh, problem when the obstacles are dynamic? Uh, no, for this research, no. Okay, thank you. Um, that also uh, actually they can be considered in that way, but it's somehow to correlate with the speed of the drone. So at the same time we can like if we know the obstacle are moving to facing our, we can just plus this uh, speed to our drone and consider this as a study. Okay, uh, what about the dimension? Uh, it is a, a three level it's dimension. Into two, two dimension. Oh, what about three? Uh, three <laughs> yeah, this is the future research. For three okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, it seems to me in some <clears throat> uh, recent slides you mentioned some probabilities and so on. Is your model determined or stochastic? Uh, determined. Determined. Yeah. And. Uh, it will be in future possible to enter some stochastic stochastics yeah, because uh, planning is stochastic problem. Yeah, problem. yeah, yeah, it's possible, especially with proximal policy optimization, it allows to work with stochastic problems. So also possible to try. And uh, you used, uh, you mentioned um, Python, mm -hmm. but how it will be used on board of such drone? Uh, it and will be already trained model that can be uh, injected into mm -hmm. the, the play. Mm -hmm. so, can be used some other languages. For training. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, Please. One question about, yes, about the plate platform. Did you make some research what it can be? Uh, for two dimensional or three dimensional? Because for three dimensional, there are many. The, you mean the platform for the real drone to fly or yes. for simulation? Uh, no, no, no. For real drone, you have to place it into small drone. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. No, I didn't uh, investigate it. But uh, yeah, th that's also kind of a question because, but that's probably we need to raise when we have some. Uh, real uh, like three dimensional environment because there will be more complicated models as due to the, the third dimension. So it probably also towards uh, optimized by that criteria of the size of that model. But that's yeah, that's possible. Okay, thank you very much. Very important investigation. <clears throat> the issue. First, success. Yes. Then, um, now we may be going to Bodan Kopach, Roman Pelishchak, Vasily Tren, and so on.
Is it possible? Yes. Your bodan kopash. Yeah? Okay. Your presentation already here? One moment. We will we will look for um Once again, I, I should first of all start and second share screen. One moment. To allow our colleagues to see this presentation, but we gonna see this one. This or not? Detection of yes, sir. Ah, this. Okay. Try to use your. Work or not? Next not step. work. Uh, one moment. No, no, no. It's uh, depends on me. Now, down, up, and down. Work. Okay, please. Find my program and how him was working on the detection of similarity between images based on uh, contrast of language image for training network network. Uh, so, in similarity detection, it's a process of defining and defining the level of resemblance between two images. Uh, and with the growth of graph of that data, this task may find its applications in various systems, uh, such as content management system, the housing system, security. And it can be used for accessibility enhancement, for example, for IPX generation and so on. So uh, this research aimed to address a couple of the challenges. So first of all, with the growth of graphical data, there is a need in the creation of image similarity matrix, which will be able to detect semantic differences between the images. Uh, second problem which we tried uh, that was uh, that uh, traditional uh, matrix like structural uh, image similarity matrix and uh, feature similarity index may not capture all high level semantic relationships in the images. And overall, the integration of fleet model into image similarity detection system is very promising things. And uh, we try to bridge the gap between the semantic meaning and visual contact in the images. Uh, so, going to the research objectives, the first our objective was to explore all existing uh, approaches to the detection of image similarity, to uh, understand all their strengths and limitations. The second was to construct an innovative grid based, based matrix, which can be used to the detection of image similarity uh, that can uh, surpass traditional methods like. Uh, Structural similarity index matrix and feature similarity index matrix. Uh, the created matrix should be applicable across diverse types of the images and ensuring that it's relevant in various domains. And the matrix should be able to detect and represent the variances between the images. Uh, the hypothesis of our research is that. Uh, uh, the image similarity detection matrix that is utilizing fluid text and folders and by to send similarity between image and text description will perform traditional image similarity matrix. Uh, we explore a lot of works, but most of them can be grouped into three main categories is uh, image similarity in ontologies, uh, image similarity in clustering. And the third big group is uh, semantic uh, image similarity detection uh, using feature instruction. 
So going into the method which we used, so uh, the flip model uh, is multimodal neural network which contains two, part, uh, two big parts. Mm -hmm. The first part is image encoder and the second part is the text encoder. Mm -hmm. So basically both of the encoders are used to create the vector representation basically of the image or the text. And the loss function, but most of the time it's contrasting loss functions such as Cross entropy loss, triplet loss, or anti-extent loss uh, is used to, uh, uh, to train the model. So uh, we are able to match uh, images to the text. Uh, uh, going into our approach, we try to uh, go with the approach that we uh, didn't use just the image encoder, but the idea was to utilize the text encoder. So let's uh, we, we, uh, let's say we have one random image. So for this image, we uh, detected the best uh, and number of the descriptions utilizing basically the clip model. And then using the, for this first stage, we were just utilizing the basically we were using the clip as it was intended to use. We utilized both encoders. And for the next stage, we utilized the text encoder and uh, we used cosine similarity methods basically to find just the differences between uh, text description of both images. Uh, and uh, utilizing such techniques, we are able to find some score. Uh, how deep, uh, how different, uh, how similar the images are. Uh, so, uh, going into the experiment section, uh, for the text uh, encoder we use BERT, and for the image uh, encoder we utilize Rastat uh, uh, But uh, uh, it's not a main point, so we just like it, but. Uh, uh, image and text encoder might differ. You can use for the text encoder, you might use GPT model for uh, for the text encoder, sorry. And for the image encoder, you might, uh, you might use models like VGG or different types of the rest stack, but you will have to just do the feature extraction. So use uh, use a layer between, before the last layer of the model, which is actually the classification linear layer. And uh, going to the data sets, we uh, utilize most popular for such experiments data sets is Flickr 8K and Flickr 30K. Uh, so in the bottom, you can see the typical entity of this, this data set. It's basically the image and five descriptions. So overall, going into the total number of entities in the data set is 40,000 images and approximately 200 textual descriptions. Uh, so going into the results, we seen that our metric outperforms the metrics uh, like sim and sim. Uh, so the model uh, was showing quite good results, and it was able to uh, also correctly identify uh, much very complex images with multiple objects, uh, objects in different states, and so on. Uh, so going into the discussion, so our main findings were that by analyzing the context and uh, context of the images that the created metric provides kind of semantic understanding of in similarity beyond just pixel level comparison. Uh, the metric also surpassed traditional metrics, uh, and the result demonstrates that the matrix is uh, accurate and it can pair complex images. This showcase uh, its significant capability to interpret images with multiple objects. Uh, so going into the limitations of our matrix. So first of all, the matrix is highly dependent on text encoder ability to understand semantic uh, relationships between the uh, images. Uh, so if the text encoder is not performant enough, uh, the textual description will be far enough in the vector space and we will not be able to uh, correctly calculate image similarity. And the uh, second limitation is uh, that uh, 
um, because of the nature of this model, uh, the model is very binded to the uh, textual descriptions. So uh, in order to add new textual descriptions in the model, you, you need to retrain it, or you should ensure that the textual description which you are trying to use uh, has uh, has some similar uh, descriptions uh, uh, in your training data set. Otherwise, uh, the image similarity score will be sorted and it will be it will not show the good enough results. Uh, so going into the conclusion and the future work, uh, the flip model demonstrates a robust ability to interpret pocket images and the semantic connection between them. Uh, and the proposed image comparison metric is versatile tool, uh, which can address uh, wide range of tasks and it can be used in different systems where the image similarity is important task. Uh, for the future work, uh, uh, basically going from the restrictions of, the, of our model, in the first one is we should uh, try to experiment with different architecture because the model is very complex and utilizing models like ResNet and BART is not always a good option. Uh, basically, ResNet 50 is using 50 residual blocks, so maybe we will try in the future to experiment with different types of the network. So this is the first step which can boost the performance and the second step is probably utilize some caching mechanism and experiment how we can uh, enhance the performance of the model even further because probably the performance is the biggest limitation of our approach. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I will gladly answer them. Thank you very much. No attention, uh, no question, no, for now. I have a question. Um, for example, uh, I have two pictures, uh, one positive, second negative. What uh, limit close examples? What will your metrics will uh, react on such comparison to images? So, so you mean if they are totally different images, like- uh, Total different, negative and positive, negative the same positive picture. So yeah, it depends uh, from a couple of factors. So, but most important, it's uh, it's the text encoder which we use, and uh, basically going from there, images will be closer in the vector space or farther in the vector space. So there are two steps. The first one is uh, if, for example, uh, the textual description which we will find for those images. Uh, are very different, then they will be far enough. But if the descriptions are bad, or for example, you do not have enough description to describe your image, then we might have some issues and uh, the images might be closer in uh, the vector space. But most of the times, if uh, uh, objects which were presented on those images are represented in the training data set, the result would be good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please. Okay, question. Uh, could you consider an opposite task, for example, going from uh, the image to the textual prompt, uh, which is generated uh, given an image and generated by the image textual prompt? Yeah, so most of the time the clip is used in such ways that uh, you train basically uh, image and text encoder in, in the same way. And the most typical task is, is that uh, uh, you will have some image and uh, you can, uh, and the list, uh, it might be a list of the textual description. Then you will uh, uh, transform your image and text into the vector space, uh, and then you will Understand. use some metric. And, because uh, and maybe it would be simple to transform uh, to image to corresponding textual prompt, and uh, then compare to textual prompts. Yes, we transform it first into the text, and then we just use the text. Not, but we need that couple of the textual description because it will show mm -hmm. much better results. Because mm -hmm. that yeah, one yeah. might be not enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, might be other questions. No questions. Thank you.
Interesting. We have, maybe we should uh, have a break for, for 10 minutes because uh, we are quite long have session. Okay, then uh, 13, 55, uh, no, 50, 35, uh, we will continue our session. 10 minutes, great. Можно, можно, треба. Близько. Yeah, we continue our session and uh, I will share our screen. Yes, it's up, down, work, not, miss. Yes, yes. 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 Yes, Moment. PowerPoint. Must work. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Please. Yes. Yeah, then. Hello, my name is Elena Palak. I am an associate professor and uh, um, uh, 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 Management systems have been developed. A third system allows you to automate, uh, to automate business processes and ensure competitiveness. That helps increase the speed of processing application, reduce uh, cost, and predict sales volumes. Here, platforms are different um, depending on the function they are performed. Um, lead management. This customer relationship management uh, system uh, collects information about potential customer, uh, customers from various sources, evaluate their potential, and connect a new leads with appropriate sales representative. Sales uh, partner uh, management. Such CRM systems map uh, the sales partner within the CRM program to better understand the customer journeys to protect and increase conversion. Uh, work product automation and marketing. Uh, this is a certain automate um, real time tasks such as a prospecting, uh, lead uh, segmentation, and customer interaction to streamline workflows and provide a uh, personal data approach to potential customers. Reporting and forecasting. This customer relationship management system use dashboards, serial analytics, and reporting tools to identify. The customer needs and measure sales performance. Uh, sales analysis and forecasting are key to uh, depend, uh, developing um, um, uh, a sales strategy uh, and optimizing business processes um, to allow companies to make decisions uh, taking into account the net, the structure of the customer base, and other factors. Uh, today, the problem of protecting sales in CRM system uh, demands a uh, relevant due to the need of for enterprises mm -hmm. uh, to obtain accurate estimated of their cost uh, and revenues, which enables them to forecast their short team and long team effective, uh, effectiveness. Currently, uh, such forecasting is a refinement uh, of their competitive rates of modern business enabling the enterprise to stay afloat. Uh, we identified um, main processes of the analysis and formation of sales forecast system, such as strategic planning. 
uh, this uh, process um, includes um, strategic goals, determination in the field of sales and profitability, strategic and, uh, and uh, tactic uh, development uh, to achieve the goal through sales forecasting, data collection and integration. Um, this process includes identification of data sources such as historical data, uh, sales, um, customer data, demographic data, and integration of this data into a single system for fast analysis. Uh, data analysis include analytical methods used for a processing and analysis of historical self data, uh, correlations and uh, connection identification uh, between various factors uh, and sales volumes. Mm, forecast development. Prognostic models uh, construction based on data analysis and taking into account historical trends and variable factors. Uh, generation of cells for cat based on these models for uh, different time periods. Mm, validation and adjustment. Uh, comparison of forecast um, with actual cells result uh, to validate accuracy. Uh, correction making to forecast based on uh, the um, you know, to with the items uh, from actual data. Planning and resources. A determination of resource needs based on sales forecast. Planning of work, uh, pro processes and uh, resources to meet demand. Monitoring and reporting. Mm, include constant monitoring of strategy, implementation and forecast result. Creation of record and analytical data to inform management and decision making. A sales uh, forecast problem is usually a regression problem because it involves predicting uh, numerical uh, values, um, sales values. Uh, usage is a regression method for forecasting sales in the CRM system. Uh, rationally, a regression allows you to model the relationship between um, a a dependent variables such as sales uh, and independent sales variables which is critical to operate a forecasting application. Regression can be used to develop a model that will predict cells based on historical data and other factors. Factors such as product price, number of customers, advertising uh, expenditure, uh, ads uh, can be included as uh, independent variables. Effectiveness, uh, the regression method is effective for a modeling linear uh, and not linear relationship between variables. It allows you to analyze the impact of various factors on uh, cells and develop cells strategies based on this analysis. When uh, considering the problem of forecasting, it is always necessary to take into account the pre uh, presence of uncertainty and as a result of mm, in, uh, complete information. Considering the presence of the uncertainty factor and heterogeneous uh, pieces uh, of information system, a forecast is for one of the general approaches to the analysis and forecasting of the properties of such uh, processes is the uh, consideration of uh, their time science. And we choose a time science method for each. Uh, we will uh, describe the sequence of events in the process of forecasting cells in CRM using a uh, UML sequence diagram. In this case, uh, we have three main objects CRM user, uh, CRM system, uh, and a forecasting process. Mm, this diagram um, allows you to uh, list uh, the sequence of events in the process of forecasting cells in the CRM and show the interaction between objects. Uh, on this slide, the structure model of the DRM system is shown. Uh, to use the list, um, the architectural structure of the software system, we will use the component diagram. Uh, this diagram allows you to represent the system as an uh, interconnected uh, component and show how um, they inter uh, interact with each other. Uh, Microsoft Machine Learning Studio, um, as one of the main tools 
for solving this uh, the problem of analysis and forecasting in zero uncertainty has been chosen. Um, my personal machine learning studio, uh, formerly known as Azure Machine Learning Studio, is an integrated platform for developing and deploying machine learning models. Uh, the development uh, of a project to solve the problem of forecasting cells in zero uncertainty using RMS Azure and machine learning included the following uh, steps mm -hmm. data preparation, uh, creation of an Azure machine learning workspace, creation and experiment, experiment uh, data preparation and visualization, uh, model selection and uh, training, model validation and um, tuning, mod, uh, and model uh, deployment. A learning environment uh, using uh, a prediction web service uh, that can be integrated with a CRM system. Provision of a mechanism for, for updating the model with new data. In this work, the pilot analysis of the system of uh, interaction between customers and the company was carried out. The business processes of the CRM system were uh, described using a structural approach where the sales forecast models uh, where a development um, in customer relationship management systems uh, and the best uh, of them was true. Uh, creation of system of analysis and formation of sales forecast in zero systems allow you uh, to, forest, uh, to forecast sales in customer relationship management systems and is a powerful tool for increasing the company's competitiveness and growing cooperation with customers. Business models for analysis and forecasting sales in the CRM system help the company to effectively manage a relationship with customers, maximize profitability, and improve the quality of customer service. The problem of forecasting sales as a liquidation problem help being defined. At the main stages that need to be performed to track the model of the sales analysis and forecast system in customer relationship management system in Azure machine learning are shown. Um, the uh, development uh, system is effective and provides high accuracy with, which allows enterprises uh, to rationally uh, use their resources for future growth and monitor cash flows. In, uh, the innovativeness uh, of the world consists in uh, Automated approach uh, to forecasting sales of uh, SRM systems based on the use of large volumes of data and machine learning algorithms. A thank you for attention. Thank you very much. Um, maybe some questions. Well, one question I have <laughs> yeah. about the uh, structure of your system. When you saw it, uh, it was uh, line with, uh, with your encryption before database. And uh, do you want to encrypt all data in, and store in, in database, or maybe some small parts of data you want to encrypt? Mm -hmm. uh, we use uh, Machine Learning Studio and uh, mm, uh, uh, it's have um, uh, um, uh, 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 we use database uh, and uh, um, uh, 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 is it the movie of written uh, uh, Azure? Me, uh, Christol, uh, no, no, Christol, uh, no, me, it's a dining, uh, um, Залежить від СУБД. Може бути по-різному, щоб не був аксес. Там від рівнів допуску, може, до окремих таблиць. Там, так, даємо дати і подаємо результат. Там, де і так, бі сенситив. Інсайд датабейс. Окей. Ну, і не питання. Дякую дуже за вашу репорт.
Thank you. And we are going to report uh, it uh, all her quotes in YouTube. Please give your flash card. And then we have only two. Roseslav Uranus will be next, uh, but in, and last. It's like slide. Thank you. No, it's complex, complex procedure. One moment. Started or not started, I don't know. Once again. Two times started in the. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, uh, I I should share my screen one moment. Escape. Escape. No, no, no. Better not to escape. This one might be. And turn back to presentation. Uh, this works, yeah. Try up and down, works or not? No. Works, okay. Good. Please. Um, I will present the results of our research on proactive application for machine learning methods for product view of third value. And as always, we try to connect economic view and technical view on the problem which we have in the real situation in real life. So uh, our other quality is Olegler for so you can I or the quality. Um, every of us in some moment in, uh, in his life or the situation we have we buy or sell some property, and in this period, it's uh, actual for you to find the real value of your property, of your um, or land, or flat, or house. And uh, at this moment, we try to analyze a lot of information, a lot of data, and uh, same proof, it's difficult to find uh, uh, enough objective information about real estate value. and. Uh, to build some market trend because you don't do these operations enough often and it's difficult to concentrate uh, this problem at such a moment. Uh, so nowadays uh, we have some possibilities to use different applications to speed up this process, to reduce cost for, uh, for these uh, operations and uh, try to build some uh, models uh, to optimize processes of estimating uh, uh, real estate value. Uh, also have to say that uh, um, uh, it, uh, such such model would be uh, good for different different uh, participants of market because uh, sellers will get possibility to sell with a better price. Uh, buyers will understand that this property really costs so, so much as it is asked. Uh, the goal of the research is to develop the machine learning model that will provide users with up to date data on the value of real estate projects. Because uh, in most situations, when you try to estimate your property, you can find all, all data, all closed data, and it's uh, really difficult to do it by yourself, by private person, and uh, especially when you uh, work in this sphere, you need some applications which will help to organize your work. Uh, a real estate uh, assessment process play a critical role in determining successful deals for both buyers and sellers. And uh, I have to say that nowadays, artificial intelligence uh, marked the beginning of a period of changes, and we got possibilities to organize these processes 
this high efficiency, accuracy, transparency, and to make uh, these operations better for both uh, participants. Uh, I have to say that traditional methods uh, all doesn't work today or work in the uh, too simplified uh, variety, and it's necessary to, to implement uh, modern information technology, modern approaches uh, to organize uh, estimation of property in the highest way. Um, also, we can highlight uh, some advantages of using uh, artificial intelligence for determining the value of real estate. And uh, they are not general, but it's a possibility to uh, receive high level of accuracy, to receive uh, time efficiency, cost reduction, use of geodata, clear understanding, and improved investment uh, selection. Uh, here you can see the logos of most most uh, popular applications for selling, buying, renting real estate. And uh, if to analyze these pictures, um, we have two uh, which have popularity in Japan. It's uh, Dimria and Olix. Uh, almost everybody knows about them. And when you want to sell some property, you use these services without thinking where to find uh, other ones. Um, but on our market, also other ones are also used. Other propositions are uh, famous uh, in America, in Canada, in European territory. And I uh, have to say that, uh, if to say about all the service, uh, uh, there you can find not a lot of propositions of property. You can, by yourself, compare the value and set your value by yourself, but there is no possibility uh, to use some analytical tools, uh, to some indicators, uh, some uh, approaches how to estimate your product. Dimria uh, is uh, better in this way, so it uh, proposes uh, various indicators uh, uh, how to create your property and uh, give you possibility uh, if you are advised to user uh, to. Um, determine the uh, value of your property uh, on three bases. Uh, other, other apps uh, are <laughs> much more better because they propose and use uh, real data for estimating uh, value of property. Uh, they uh, try to build some trends, try to predict uh, the value of rent, of uh, uh, value of uh, some, uh, some uh, assets. And uh, of course, it's good to use them if you uh, are not, um, if you don't have enough experience at this month. Uh, if to talk about uh, system based on uh, the machine learning model, which we propose, uh, the main difference from existence for us is a combination of uh, um, properties of our uh, property with uh, location of this property. Because nowadays we understand that it's necessary not only to know how many rooms you want to buy, is there one you see or two ones, uh, what is the floor, and uh, will you have the place for parking or not, but also it's necessary to know is uh, near to this property, children garden, is there some school, some uh, water pool, and some other sections which are important for you. The same way like you choose a hotel when you travel mm -hmm. somewhere. Well, the same you choose your property because it's not operation of every everyday action and you will do it for, for a long time and it's normal to think about these possibilities and of course if you get these possibilities this property is uh, more expensive than other ones yes uh, everybody <laughs> try to find property in the center of the city because there is a lot of possibility for making business for meetings and so on and uh, nobody in the Prefer to buy in Lovendivka uh, because now that it's not a very good uh, region of the city and uh, the history of region, the possibilities of the region must be included when we calculate uh, uh, value of our property. Information system uh, will be used to optimize the process of searching for real estate, evaluate uh, its value, and provide the opportunities to make mutually beneficial deals between buyers and users. 
And uh, the main what we want uh, to get the model of this uh, car for percent accuracy. Uh, we expect that it will be five seven percent on average, uh, because analyzing other other system which propose uh, something similar, uh, the highest level of accuracy was uh, three point seven, and uh, analogs uh, are not used in Ukraine, so uh, five seven percent for our minds will be enough. Uh, difficulty of the task uh, lies in the limited number of resources. Uh, because in Ukraine we have secrecy of real estate data, uh, we have uh, hidden data, uh, it's difficult to find some historical data. Uh, data which is presented on our statistical channels of Ukraine are uh, with uh, <laughs> really big time lag. And to analyze nowadays, uh, based on data two or three years ago, it's not actual data. So we need. Uh, um, Mm. Accumulate data from real services, from uh, real possibilities. Uh, the process of creating the machine learning model is conditionally divided into several stages. And we propose to talk about four main stages. So, in the first, uh, you need to uh, find uh, available uh, data resources. And uh, nowadays, of course, if you want to get a lot of data, you have to pay for this. A lot of data on payable ways. Uh, you can create your own computing uh, systems to search them. And uh, it's not about property, but we need to talk about our, our country. National Bank of Ukraine created his own, uh, own system uh, to um, gather data about prices, about uh, currency rates, and so on. So they receive results a uh, quarter of a year faster than uh, fiscal, uh, statistical service of Ukraine, which organizes this gathering in, in country on the uh, usual best. So it's possible to receive data faster, but <laughs> you have to pay for this process. Next stage involves determining minimum lists of the most important uh, important features and parameters of real estate. And uh, we have to determine which of them we will include in our model, what is important for us. Uh, third stage um, uh, means that we divide our data for training and testing and try to uh, organize the modeling process. And at the fourth stage, we choose that model which give us better results and try to find the optimal the parameters uh, which will calculate, evaluate our real property. Um, since there is uh, work involved to determine the value of real estate based on certain input parameters, uh, we decided to use regression models uh, which are uh, using the uh, uh, by machine learning, and uh, we can use them in different spheres. Uh, of course, we can forecast the changing values uh, of property, prices, uh, range fluctuations, uh, uh, different uh, trends, and so on. So, regression nowadays is uh, of uh, wide use. And uh, in our research, you can find a little bit more about advantages and disadvantages of different regression models. Um, Maybe it's not something really unique, but for our research, it gives us a uh, possibility to, to choose which one will be the best. Uh, I know that everybody wants the testing process is important uh, because it shows us uh, is our model working or, or not. And we tried to uh, organize it. And here you can see uh, which uh, uh, regression was uh, used as the best for this one, and it was random forest regression. Uh, second figure shows us uh, the results, um, uh, the result of forecasting the value of square meter of real estate according to some parameters. And figure three, this one shows uh, the distribution of the absolute error of the predicted results in percentage. So I have to say that um, uh, in general, our model performed well. And the results of the study indicate that it was successful and it can be used. Uh, of course, uh, it, oh, sorry. Sorry, of course, my, my mistake. <laughs> yes, yes, it's my, it's my mind. 
Uh, of course, uh, the data was analyzed for just for one CV, but it's uh, possible to uh, to make it uh, more wide uh, to accumulate more information and uh, calculate real estate for different different regions, different cities, different countries. Uh, the main is approach and data which we will use for for these calculations. Um, this figure shows us. Uh, actors which uh, will be involved in the system. So he will be a authorized user, not unauthorized user, investor administrator, and uh, uh, unauthorized user can change its uh, access uh, for, for the system because different type of information will be possible to analyze to get as a, a result of, of this model because different possibilities of different users. And um, and you can see uh, the architecture of the system prototype. It will be divided uh, for three main components, the data providing service, back-end service, and front-end service. Uh, plus, especially like the student says, it's better to work with uh, front-end because it's <laughs> visible, and, uh, but nobody wants to, to think how it is calculated, how this is estimated. And so our main work uh, is uh, in the middle of, of, this, uh, uh, of this system because uh, we have to accumulate data together, we have to calculate model, we have to find the way how to, um, how to estimate the real estate value. Um, if to say about results, of course, uh, it's just uh, the beginning, the beginning point of uh, the research. But uh, um, uh, this system can interact with other systems, can accumulate uh, data from other services. Of course, uh, all this data was used uh, as a basis for calculation because there is a lot of. Uh, real information, uh, up to the information, and uh, data is correctly transmitted, stored, and displayed, and we have uh, checked this one and understand the system works. Uh, so let's let's finish. As a result of the search, uh, we created a machine mo a learning model, which can be used to determine the value of real estate depending on its physical parameters and geographical location. Uh, the process of creating machine, of, uh, machine learning model is uh, conventionally divided into four stages, as I said. Uh, the quality of this model was checked uh, on the um, uh, sample of data and uh, the results show that this model can be used. And it was decided to divide system for the separate services, each of which uh, will be responsible for a certain list of functions. And have to say that uh, we expect that our system will get some uh, some uh, positive effects uh, for process of estimating the uh, 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 property value uh, because it will simplify the search for real estate. It will improve the cost estimation. It will uh, propose a reduction of risks for investors and have a positive impact on the real estate market because the palaces will be actual and uh, you will have a real real base why, why this property costs in this way not other. Uh, of course you have to understand the property is bought not just for living, just for using, but as an investment, uh, you can invest your, your costs, your funds, uh, and try to earn on using this property. And of course, for investors, it's really important to know the real, real value of this property, real possibility to earn on its use. Um, we hope that such system will be uh, useful for buyers, for sellers, especially for investors, and that it will simplify business processes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, questions? Have you compared uh, uh, such such servers like you the Loom UA. Uh, uh, no, Loom UA wasn't used in our research, but I know that it is uh, it's actual. But uh, we stopped on two uh, pr uh, 
most popular in Ukraine, but like, well, listen to India. So, so uh, yes, uh, I mentioned Tunde because they also uh, try to uh, uh, have some part of the market and uh, they propose some new solutions. Uh, they also analyze some uh, ecological aspects of the real estate uh, and other factors. And uh, for example, in Kyiv, it's widely used, very widely used. I, I think more than real, than real and all weeks. And <laughs> and another question, which is related, which is related to all of these services, uh, how do you deal with the fake data? Because um, I I know about a lot of stories that when the some guys uh, posted some information, so I can uh, I want to. Uh, sell you my uh, apartment, but it is a kind of a fear. So, <laughs> what about this data? How to detect and <laughs> we, we do talk, this? We talk about this in the research that the uh, data must be checked, must be uh, uh, analyzed uh, because some data can be loose, some data can be fake, uh, and uh, of course it must be analyzed. Uh, but it's easier if to talk about property to talk what is it's really valid than, for example, if you talk about cars. You never know history about flat. It's easier to know was it in the fire or not. It's seen, uh, but if you talk about the fact that, of course, it, it can be. It's our real situation. Some persons want to sell with higher price, uh, uh, and uh, data must be analyzed. Of course, uh, some criteria must be used because uh, it's not the one, the one flat, the one building. We understand that it's region. If there was some storm, so all all flats, all buildings of the region have possibility uh, to be stored, and we we understand it. Of course, uh, the system during analyzing the data must compare this data with other very similar about similar region uh, and then so it I must be analyzed and must be uh, worked with that. Have you investigated uh, somehow the impact of such data to your uh, system? Because if you use the fake data in the training data set, <laughs> mm, <laughs> it's a big question, what, what will you have in the result? And how to filter such data in uh, uh, on the beginning in the input stage because i know that uh, this all these services trying to deal with somehow with this data but there is no guarantee that uh, that data which you collected uh, are real data mm -hmm. so and uh, this how many uh, fake data uh, cannot uh, increase the mm -hmm. impact uh, in that level that your uh, uh, analytics will be uh, irrelevant. In my opinion, in this sector, we have a uh, really little level of fake data because it's not financial market, it's not about currencies, it's not about some financial services, because in this sphere, too much fake data, too much political data and so on. Uh, real estate market is uh, more stable with less fake data, so for my opinion, uh, we don't have to think a lot about this, but just to check, just to compare, and it will be enough. I don't think that it will improve on the result of uh, our system of uh, the result of estimation. Thank you. Yes. Why did you choose Angular for Fontan? Someone? Or why did you choose Angular for Fontan? Is that the first question? And the second Angular question? Angular front-end. Front do you know what is front end? Front end or the media yeah. operation? Angular, 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 you mentioned in the presentation. It's not about me. <laughs> no, okay. I, I don't financial. Okay. I, I can't uh, explain about prices, about changes in the revenue, okay. about On the your presentation. Uh, then it's not my part of research. <laughs> I, I can't explain. Oh, okay, and uh, the <laughs> second part, it's not the uh, uh, question. It's will be um, offer for you for uh, uh, you present that what you will have at the camp on which the screen framework is Java and uh, Microsoft over the less data by the tone. Mm -hmm. But uh, for supporting such system, you will have or uh, two developers who know Java and Python or one multi-language developer, who, mm -hmm. which is uh, very difficult to find such specialists on the market. 
Mm -hmm. So I made it. You just one. Uh, yeah, yeah just then, for example, example, you can write the uh, backend or write Python or Django framework. Thanks for the recommendations. Thanks. Young people uh, very often know both languages. Python know everybody, but uh, specialist in Java, each good specialist in Java should know Python or very uh, need a few days to <laughs> to start in Java uh, now, in Python. Nowadays, Python is studied at school, and uh, I think that my son thinks that he knows Python. <laughs> I mean, he knows just if you want, but uh, if you ask him like a special he will say that you know this language, second language, and so. So, okay. Okay. Uh, my question, uh, you mentioned uh, some uh, regression function mm -hmm. uh, according to um, sphere meters of uh, these uh, partners. Mm -hmm. But before you mentioned too many parameters influence um, on the price of this. Um, it was so just just a part of the results. Uh, so mm -hmm. some other parameters also were uh, estimated and uh, tried to analyze what is the influence on the real estate value of this girl. Yes, it's part of <laughs> it not shown real problem because uh, uh, imagine when your apartment in place where smell is not very good. We propose to, and, uh, calculate, to include these parameters. Of course, some of them can be calculated as, as matters in uh, quantities, but we have some... in view such a region where yes. very good Street, yes, for example. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> nobody understand, realize when uh, if you don't live there, you don't know the that, problem. that it is very big problem for them. In general, we understand that it's necessary to, to analyze all these when we calculate the value. You cannot the show effect. on this um, site smell of um, <laughs> surroundings. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your report. Thank you. And then we are going to next report. Next will be, uh, please take your flashcard. Ah. And uh, Euronet's next reporter. <clears throat> One moment, yeah. I will try to find out this number 18. Mm. Yeah, but you put after both these months. Moment, moment, then. Again, needs some additional preparation. Please try. Is it works or not? No. No. Yes. Not work. Not work. First moment. This way. Okay. We will monitor data for casting the dynamic of cryptocurrency rates based on logistic regressions. The study examines uh, the simulation of cryptocurrency price chains to predict uh, the future trajectory using discriminant analysis tools. The research uh, focuses uh, on identifying key uh, quantitative uh, financial risk variables that significantly influence uh, the growth or decline of cryptocurrency. Using logit regression, the study accesses the probability of categorizing cryptocurrency price into group or decline groups. The approach to forecasting the dynamic of cryptocurrency rates in basics 
on the use of the major factors. Success is the rate of increase of cryptocurrency. It's necessary to establish a, a relationship between the second list of factors and the effect of growth or decline of cryptocurrency. The growth uh, or decline of cryptocurrency can be indicated uh, by only two values of a binary variable. Therefore, we need to build a model to predict the value of the binary variable. The following uh, data were used to build a model for estimating uh, the rate of growth or decline of cryptocurrency price. The third date a uh, fragment of which is present in table one, uh, we will use to estimate the unknown parameters of logic model. Data analysis uh, shows the presence of uh, uh, multiplicity. Therefore, it is uh, advisable to apply the approach of principal components. The main idea of the approach uh, is to replace highly correct correlated variables with a set of new variables between which there is no correlation. At the same time, the new variables are linear combinations of the original variables. The characteristics of the received logic model are as follows. The analytical expression of the model will look like this. Figure uh, one shows the effect on the cryptocurrency price of the factor NASDAQ composite uh, stock index for certain values of the factor S and P stock index and fixed values of the other factor. That is uh, the group of, of the NASDAQ composite and S and P stock indexes at fixed values of other indicator leads to an increase in this price of the considered uh, cryptocurrencies. Figure two shows the effect on the cryptocurrency price of the factor NASDAQ composite stock index for certain values of the factor Nikkei stock index and fixed values of other factors. That is uh, the group of the NASDAQ composite and Nikkei stock index at fixed values of the under other indicators lead to an increase in the price of cryptocurrency. The economic factors constantly fluctuate, fluctuate impacting both traditional and crypto metrics. Figures three show the effect on cryptocurrency price of the factor, the value of the CSSE PLS company stock for certain values of the factor the value of companies into corporation stock and fixed values of the other factors. The obtained analytical expression can be used to estimate the rate of growth or decline of cryptocurrency price at different values of the factor. Let's estimate with the help of the build model the rate of growth or decline of the cryptocurrency price, information about which is given in the table three. The calculations show the possibility of price growth only in the second and third cases. The use of machine, uh, machine learning methods 
facilitates the exploration of relationships between various economic indicators and cryptocurrency price change, providing solutions for the analysis and forecasting the growth for the client index of cryptocurrency price. A key aspect of modern cryptocurrency analysis is predicting the future course of cryptocurrencies, which in addition to identifying trends in the development of cryptocurrency markets, allow effective strategic decision to be made at all, all levels of management and increases their profit, profitability indicators of an individual trader's work. Thank you for that. Thank you for your report. Please, please <laughs> question. The first question is for me is the last year. Do you want to predict uh, uh, your cryptocurrency indexes? Тут додавалося тільки на один, тут більше побудова моделі. Модель передбачає день на день прогноз, чи там, припустимо, на рік, два, день? Це не прогноз ціни, це прогноз росту або спаду ціни, щоб грати на біржі. Буде день-день. На біржі день-день, але може бути нема, нема росту, раптом є, потім знову нема. Це може бути через місяць, через тиждень, через... Якісь конкретні технології підбрали, які ви пропонували? Так, конкретні дані, процес сайту, це біткоін, це по біткоін. Ви річмен, ви маєте модель, і ви можете вирішити кожен час. Багато людина знає це. Це студент, який займається продажем криптовалюти, не захотів робити цю диплом. Йому вирішили, що простіше зробити без машинного нічі. Але він займається, тобто він його бізнес, тобто його робота, продаж криптовалюти. І він не хотів цього. Так, це яка регресія? Це логістик вирішення. А чому не лінійна? Звичайно, лінійна регресія. Логістична регресія – це екс. Так, так. Ну а чому не взяти лінійну регресію? Нашу ускладну. Нам треба 0,1 або ріст, або спад. Якщо звичайно візьмете, то там буде 0,1, 2, 3, 4. Ну, тепніший прогноз. Ну, окей. Thank you very much for your report. We have no any questions more. And uh, as I understand, it's all reports for today. And we should close our... You have a report? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, which one? Uh, the, tomorrow. It was... oh, tomorrow. Yes. Mm, yes. Please, okay. I have no... Завтрашній доповідачі питання? Є. Окей. Let we have your presentation to you. Yes. Yes. Slides, challenges. Yes. Thank you, slides. Yes. Can you open the full mode, the full screen mode? One more moment. What this way, but uh, I should again share my screen. Mm. It's not good. Moment once more. Why not works? I don't know. It yeah. works. Okay, works, but uh, it should be clean screen. But I have this black 
Uh, um, okay, please. Yeah, dear participants, let me present with some results of our research called conceptual identification within the composition of fuzzy homogeneous classes of objects. So um, here is this short outline of our presentation. And let's start hmm, what we are doing and uh, Hmm. I want to explain this using the general architecture and diagram of knowledge based system. It is one of the kind of intelligent systems. So um, here we can see uh, different modules which can be uh, a part uh, uh, of particular system. And uh, the heart of the such kind of system is the knowledge base. And uh, if you want to uh, interact and publish the knowledge base, you need uh, such models like extraction, inference, and retrieval. So, and uh, our research uh, in, in scope of this uh, report will be focused on this uh, three models, extraction, retrieval, and inference. So, uh, here's the main goals of uh, our uh, research, we uh, tried to uh, propose new approach of uh, fuzzy knowledge identification and uh, provide a uh, corresponding algorithm which can be uh, applied for the fuzzy object oriented knowledge representation models. So uh, let us begin from the definition what is the concept of identification. It was uh, proposed by Rudolf Wille, uh, and it is actually finding the taxonomic position as uh, some concept in the concept hierarchy. This, by concept hierarchy, I mean the object-oriented class hierarchy. It can be ontology, it can be um, other kind of network or uh, taxonomy, uh, uh, and um, uh, we will propose the theory called formal concept analysis, which is the powerful mathematical tool for analysis of such uh, taxonomies. Uh, and uh, uh, after this, a lot of approaches were proposed uh, to for the uh, to identification. And uh, the main three classes which uh, we investigated. Uh, in the uh, last uh, three last three five years, which were published in the uh, uh, journals, scientific journals, it is rule based identification, multi stage intersection, and uh, criteria based identification. All these uh, um, approaches uh, based on the consideration uh, attributes of objects and. Uh, trying to uh, uh, understand the position of particular object uh, according to other objects, uh, analyzing the attributes. However, uh, all of them uh, pay less attention to the um, dependencies between the attributes. Because as you know, uh, some attributes of the class can be uh, uh, Definitely using other attributes. Uh, it, uh, for example, computational uh, properties. When well, one property is definite, like uh, uh, for example, so uh, 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 some of two or three other properties, and in this way, uh, this property depends on that properties. The same of methods. When you uh, uh, invoke one method, they it can uh, use another uh, methods invocation. So and this is like main kind of dependencies and all these approaches uh, do not pay attention to this and uh, in the result it can produce uh, unrealistic concepts uh, which uh, are unreal uh, or impossible within the model domain. Therefore, this is the main problem of them. So we try to propose another approach uh, which uh, consider these uh, internal semantic dependencies for this purpose. Uh, uh, we used uh, um, fuzzy homogeneous classes of objects like uh, uh, nodes of fuzzy object-oriented dynamic networks. 
In other words, it is a, a class hierarchy where the classes are fuzzy classes, not discrete, uh, but fuzzy. What does it mean? It means that property of the class can be definite as a fuzzy set or uh, linguistic variables, and uh, uh, it is fuzzification of the CRISP classical or P model. And uh, here you can see the class which uh, represents uh, such fuzzy concept as a journey uh, through the sequence of uh, ge geographical places. And uh, we have the property transfers, which mean uh, transfer from one geographical place to another. And this is one transfer, then second one, and you have a tree through the uh, sequence of locations. And you have a distance, duration, and etc. And all these properties and methods uh, have some relations with, with each other. Uh, I um, put some uh, information about this, but we don't have a time to uh, study them in more details. And uh, I will uh, skip them and uh, uh, will continue uh, with the dependencies. Uh, to formalize some of the dependencies between attributes, uh, we use the idea of chemical uh, uh, compounds, um, atoms and molecules. So why so? Because uh, uh, as you know uh, from the basic chemistry course, that uh, atoms it is the simplest uh, indivisible uh, particle, while the molecular is the combination of atoms or smaller molecules together. And uh, the same uh, idea we use to formalize the um, dependencies between attributes. Uh, and uh, if the attribute is definite without using other attributes, it is an atom because it is uh, independent. Uh, and if it depends on other attributes, it is a molecular because it uses uh, uh, other attributes and uh, they together uh, form the molecular. So here is the definition, uh, formal definition of these uh, concepts. So. Um, Analyzing the previous class uh, of journey, uh, we um, observed uh, one atom and eight molecules, uh, uh, which describe this dependency uh, between attributes. And uh, altogether, these atoms and molecules uh, form the such colored in internal semantic dependencies, uh, which is very important thing uh, uh, when we uh, consider the composition of the class or class hierarchy on the subclasses or sub hierarchy uh, in in context of uh, semantic consistency, and uh, also um, extracted uh, atoms and molecules have some, especially molecules have some uh, relations. Uh, so uh, uh, it means that some of them are included in uh, some smaller molecules are included in more bigger molecules. Okay, and uh, to visualize this, uh, we use this graph graphical representation, and you can see uh, um, that uh, violet circles means the property or method. And the arrow, down arrow, it means that uh, the next property or method is depends on the previous, depends on the previous one. And uh, this is like dependency, dependency chain or uh, or inclusion uh, uh, in molecules because as you can see, some of mole smaller molecules are part of the bigger molecules. And uh, put this step all together, we can uh, represent the Mm, fuzzy internal semantic dependency graph, where uh, the nodes of the graph are uh, properties or methods of the class, uh, ages uh, means the dependency between them, and the numbers, uh, uh, name of ages, it means the uh, indexes of molecules where this part uh, is, a, is a member. And uh, Mm, we propose the algorithm which used the uh, as input uh, fuzzy homogeneous class of object and uh, some of its uh, semantically consistent subclass which we want to identify uh, uh, in the decomposition. What does it mean? We split the class uh, on the all possible semantically consistent subclasses, and we know the one of we choose one of these uh, subclasses and want to understand uh, its position uh, uh, in uh, in this uh, decomposition. 
And uh, we use for this uh, um, collection of constraints. These constraints are definite by molecules because they uh, uh, define these dependencies between the attributes. And if some subclass uh, contradict this dependency, it is uh, invalid or inconsistent, and we need to escape it, avoid it. And uh, delta is a accuracy for computation of fuzziness of subclasses. And as the output the algorithm uh, returns uh, this uh, set of semantically consistent subclasses and superclasses for particular uh, subclass in the, in the decomposition. And here is the description of uh, stages, uh, uh, how the algorithm works. Uh, it analyzes the uh, molecules uh, uh, as a constraint and try to and solves the um, constraint satisfaction problem, checking the subclasses uh, uh, satisfiability to these dependencies. And uh, in this way, it constructs uh, the set of semantically consistent subclasses. Then uh, we can uh, analyze this uh, set and uh, find the superclasses and subclasses for particular subclass which we want to identify in this uh, taxonomy. And uh, here you can see uh, what we call tower of subclasses. Uh, a few words, what does it mean? Uh, the biggest tower, which is represented on the bottom of the slide, is the uh, uh, simplified representation of lattice. Uh, it's only a nodes without edges. And uh, if we put it in this way, it looks similar to the Burj Khalifa tower or something like that, before we call it tower. Mm -hmm. And as uh, you can see, uh, some of part of the tower is uh, gray, co in, uh, colored in gray and lime color. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, the gray color, it is the subclasses which are semantically inconsistent. The lime color, uh, it is the classes which are semantically consistent. And uh, the two other uh, towers, which are in the middle and the top of the slide, you can uh, figure out that it is a, a gray tower, it is inconsistent one. Uh, uh, and the uh, lime tower, it is consistent one. Why I showed this uh, slide uh, to, uh, to explain that uh, only small part of all possible subclasses are semantically consistent. And this is the case, uh, place and problem where the um, approaches to for the identification of subclasses uh, based on the uh, formal concept analysis uh, can produce uh, semantically inconsistent subclasses. Okay, uh, here's a little bit of numbers you can uh, understand that uh, first line, it is a cardinality of all possible subclasses. We use the eight, uh, five uh, methods and, uh, uh, and three properties uh, class and uh, eight together. So uh, second, uh, second row, it is a formally possible subclasses number. And the third row, it is the consistent ones. Uh, and uh, consistent, uh, the last row, it is the consistency in the percent. So you can see that among uh, 500 uh, uh, and 10 uh, possible subclasses, only 71 is semantically consistent. It is approximately 14% only. And it is uh, uh, important uh, thing which allows us to reduce the uh, search space. Uh, and uh, when we try to identify the position of the sub particular subclass, we will consider only semantically consistent subclasses. And uh, here is the uh, example of semantically consistent uh, uh, subclasses which form the uh, complete bounded lattice. And uh, if we go back to this one, uh, uh, this green uh, or line uh, um, tower have, is represented have, in the form of a uh, You have a uh, laser. On, on oh, last yeah. one. Yeah, so and uh, uh, you, you you can see uh, these uh, structures. So every node has some relations with the other nodes and uh, they are connected uh, with each other. And uh, here we have example of identification of particular subclass. subclass. We choose the subclass with the, uh, what <laughs> I need to explain what, is, what means this number. Uh, uh, the 
Mm, top number means the cardinality of subclass. It means six properties, six attributes in the mm -hmm. subclass. And uh, the lower index means the number of uh, among uh, all subclasses of such cardinality. It means that there are uh, uh, some number of cardinal uh, subclasses of cardinality six, and this one is the 29th uh, subclass around, uh, among these uh, uh, cardinalities. And uh, if we go, uh, go here, we can find this subclass uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this slide, and uh, here's the identification uh, lattice. And in this way, uh, we can see uh, the set of all uh, superclasses and set of all subclasses, and both of them are semantically consistent. And <laughs> we also propose <coughs> a few uh, interesting uh, coefficients. Uh, we call it neighborhood uh, and neighborhood measure. What uh, does it mean? It means that we can consider not only the class itself, but consider some uh, neighborhood which uh, consists of uh, each superclasses or subclasses. And depending on uh, which uh, mm, uh, accuracy we, we, we want to use uh, and how uh, uh, much we want uh, uh, to add, we need uh, we can use this uh, smaller or bigger uh, neighborhood, and uh, we can uh, uh, evaluate uh, the neighborhood measure uh, using this this formula. So, and uh, the main results we propose uh, the new approach to identification of physics object oriented uh, classes uh, using the semantically consistent decomposition. Developed uh, corresponding algorithm for this, and uh, this is the main features of this uh, algorithm. Uh, most of them I uh, mentioned before. So, uh, so conclusions. So we, we can use this uh, approach uh, to compute the similarity or differences uh, uh, between uh, different classes in the taxonomy using not only the classes itself, but their neighborhood. And uh, it uh, makes wider uh, understanding of these differences and uh, similarity. And uh, also this approach can be uh, used for the knowledge extraction because uh, constructing this decomposition you extract new non-obvious or hidden knowledge uh, in terms of uh, classes. So, and uh, the last slide, it is some uh, references of our previous and related to this one uh, research. If you're interested, you can find more information. So thank you for your attention, ready to ask for any questions. Thank you, please. So uh, we are using formal concept analysis uh, when uh, the meaning of uh, given concept is defined by its attributes. Uh, what about, uh, can you approach model uh, contextual concepts? For example, we have concepts, uh, we have concepts uh, with meaning depending on uh, where they are used. For example, uh, we have we have software. Software is uh, on the study of uh, production of, of development does not have uh, an attribute price because price was not uh, set. But in the next stage, when it will be sold by marketing, price is important. <laughs> it uh, obtains a new attribute price. For example, and uh, for example, for testing, uh, the important uh, attribute is uh, size or lines of code uh, of the software. Mm -hmm. But it's absolutely not important not, uh, for end user <laughs> which buys the software. So mm -hmm. it is often. So, uh, first of all, I, I need to say that uh, we uh, don't use the formal concept analysis uh, because two reasons. Uh, first reason that uh, uh, usually formal context uh, is built on the attributes of objects. But uh, when we consider the, an object, uh, it is like a container, uh, encapsulated container with data. We don't see the, the data definition. This is the form of data storing. 
the data definition is the, on the class level where we can see these dependencies. And when you operate an object uh, and try to intersect, it, for example, a few objects, you can construct an unrealistic object because you don't see the dependencies between the attributes which are uh, obvious on the class level. Uh, it is the first reason. And uh, the second reason, uh, uh, using these uh, approaches for identification, which are uh, common, uh, common in the form of concept, an concept analysis, it produced the uh, irrelevant subclasses. The, 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 that's why we escaped this. We used our own approach, uh, 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 which is based on the uh, semantically consistent decomposition. Mm -hmm. But answering to your question, second part, um, if you add new attributes to the class and try to do, for example, formal concept analysis, it will increase the complexity exponentially because each added, uh, each additional attribute uh, will increase uh, the complexity exponentially. It will be two uh, in power n, where n is the number of attributes, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the first moment and the, the second one. When we uh, use our approach, we when we do the composition, we uh, reduce the source space, and we operate not uh, uh, to uh, power n. We uh, select only semantically consistent and informative subclasses, and uh, we uh, did experiments uh, using more uh, bigger classes, twenty pro attributes or and uh, more. It is the billions of combinations, and uh, the percent of the valid subclasses will be uh, then bigger subclass than less percent uh, of valid subclasses. Okay, so, and that's why we can easily add new attribute uh, mm -hmm. later and uh, uh, recalculate uh, this uh, identification with new data, which uh, will be very hard if we use the classical uh, from yes, a yes. approach. Sure, because, uh, yeah, for example, in the upper ontology, some foundation ontology, is often surmises that concept have some uh, identity, which is uh, not formally defined, <laughs> but it is uh, somehow inherited by a lot of uh, other classes of uh, produced from the ape. So some kind of identity. So it, uh, yeah, this, this approach also uh, can be uh, um, scaled mm -hmm. to the uh, case of uh, class hierarchy when you have the inheritance uh, and you have a chain of inheritances uh, uh, where uh, maybe single or multiple inheritance used and uh, it also can be reduced to the one uh, huge uh, lattice. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is important here it is the inclusion, strict inclusion, because otherwise you will not construct the lattice because it should be part partially order ordered set. So if you have an inclusion, uh, 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 but when some uh, class hierarchies uh, has the uh, method overloading, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why uh, this is not a classical inclusion and this more complicated case which we mm -hmm. will study mm -hmm. in the future. So it's possible. Mm -hmm. Class overloading. Mm -hmm. Other mm -hmm. questions? No question. I have. Um, maybe an lost idea. What is inconsistent class? Inconsistent class it is the class where, for example, you have a, a two uh, classes and you want to construct the intersection of them. What does it mean? Each class can be considered like a set of properties and attributes. And if you can, if you compute simple set theoretical intersection, you will construct uh, a set if these two sets has uh, have an intersection. And it also will be subclass of both of them. But uh, if you don't consider uh, the dependencies between the attributes, you can construct a class where uh, some properties will not have uh, required uh, other properties or methods which were used for their definition. Mm -hmm. And so when, you, when, you, when you involve the methods which use other methods which are absent in the class, you will have an exception. And this the meaning, is the meaning of inconsistency. Uh, when you uh, uh, try to obtain the value of the property, which is the calculation of uh, using other properties, and if you don't have some of them, you cannot compute this uh, value. And this is inconsistency. 
Okay, but in, in real life, we have our knowledge and sometimes our uh, imagine about mm -hmm. something also will be inconsistent because something I know, something I don't know, but imagine that maybe uh, I can uh, take knowledge about this, but I no need. Yeah, but I uh, operate such inconsistent uh, classes too in my mind. Yes, but we we started uh, our uh, research from that fact that uh, uh, object oriented models are used in many programming language, and mm -hmm. when you uh, uh, define uh, some inconsistent subclass, you will have an exception when your program will work. Yeah. Or uh, that's why, and uh, if you try to execute the method of this uh, of some class which refer the, to other methods and they are absent, you, you will not start the, the program. Yeah, but uh, you mentioned fuzzy classes and yes. uh, maybe fuzzy logic uh, allows to operate as yes. fuzzy classes. Yes, the, 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 the fuzzy logic exactly use, uh, you, uh, are used, uh, uh, is used for uh, modeling uh, incomplete, imprecise knowledge when you don't know exactly, when you cannot calculate precisely the value of attribute and uh, it is like more flexible way to formalize the domain uh, if you uh, you cannot operate with the strict uh, values uh, this is like the generalization of the Chris case the Chris case uh, of the object oriented model but uh, the intuition of this decomposition is uh, very similar, except the uh, fuzziness which we have in this uh, model, and it makes it more complex because when you try to compute uh, some uh, similarity between the classes, it's more complicated because this uh, linguistic variables fuzzy sets. And uh, what you should do with inconsistent classes exclude? Uh, yes, because if you use them, uh, you can produce unrealistic uh, uh, concepts in the uh, in the domain. What is the class? Class is the model of some particular domain. Uh, and if you want to uh, uh, formalize this domain, you uh, use the model which is uh, which models this particular uh, essence from this domain. Uh, and it is important to have a, a realistic model as much as you can. Otherwise, you will have inconsistent model. And uh, if you uh, use the consistent subclasses, you will have uh, the classes abstract uh, model, yeah, which is unreal in real life in, in the domain. And uh, there is the question: <laughs> Why do you need them? Okay, okay. good. No, any. Additional questions? No. Thank you very much. And uh, this time uh, already end of session for today. You have a report? Once more. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you need your notebook, maybe? No, you can have the slides. Please give us. No, I, presentation. Oh, uh, I can send it via email to the conference, but uh, I can yeah, because it's I'll find an adapter for this. Then we have flash key and we can start so uh -huh. flash key. Yeah. You like the basic question? Власне, що записує? Що записує? Ну, це правильно. Все пишеться? Так. І там у мене Оксаночка. Ну, звільняю. Вже. Якщо більше ніхто не прийде. Ви є флешка, мабі, Кірес. Попрошу, дочі. Дякую, але в мене немає адаптера, бо це мотбук, знаєте, це. І швидкість пошту. А може, там всі виходи, там не є діштани. На пошту можна так сказати? Скинь,
Иван, мол, за работу. Вообще, We are continue our session, and uh, it seems to me last report. Um, first of all, I will close previous reports. And this one. Once again, how to maximize the pH? Share. No, no, share, sure, but no, is it share? This. And then full screen if we click on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. full, screen. full screen here, uh, but where we are, the Zoom meeting. Okay. No more than 10 holy marks. Please, yeah, we are ready. Um, try works or not, please. Work, miss. Calm down. Not works. Mm -hmm. One moment. This way. It's not dependent direction. Not dependent direction. Okay, please. Okay, hello everyone. So uh, today I'll present uh, the work harnessing the advantages of integration of uh, logic in binary networks. Um, we'll dive deeper in the subject. Uh, the authors uh, are uh, Natalia Pononets, Yuri Shervan, and myself. Uh, and so, yeah, so here, here are three main points we'll talk about today. Uh, first, we'll start with problem statement. Why do we care about integration? Of logic, uh, logical operators into uh, neural networks. 
uh, then we'll uh, review some of the um, current approaches to reasoning, uh, what uh, what are available approaches, and then we'll present our result, uh, our like initial result of uh, use integration of logical operators into binary networks. Let's go ahead. So, so yeah, uh, reasoning. Uh, reasoning, uh, we can uh, see it on an example of ChatGPT, for example. Let's imagine you would like to generate some sort of a report. And so you write to the chat, write a report, for example, on climate change. Uh, yeah, just like brief, brief requests, write this report on climate change. And the chat GPT will directly start writing you the answers. It uh, will uh, put different chapters, will add the content. But what chat GPT will not do, it will not ask additional questions. It will not ask uh, who is the target audience? Uh, what is the structure of the report? Uh, what, how do you plan to use it at the end? And so this is like, these are very simple questions for human beings. We typically, like if someone asks us to write uh, this report, we'll directly ask them. But ChatGPT is limited in this respect. It will directly just give the most statistically plausible answer, which highlights that uh, it has challenges like this reason without asking all those questions. If we go further and we ask, what are the crucial questions to ask before writing the report? It will still state uh, those questions, those that we just saw, but this limitation of not being able to reason, he just doesn't know what question to answer, what uh, he doesn't have this like model of the world to understand that those questions should be asked before writing the statistical answer. And so this is like a big challenge, big limitation of neural networks. Um, they uh, work on basis of convolution. Uh, they like just give a more statistically most plausible answers instead of incorporating more complex principles of uh, logic, reasoning, etc. And so among some of the other challenges are also, are for example, efficiency. Uh, this is efficiency, explainability, reasoning, and hallucination, of course. So those are like major limitations of current power language models and all the other models that we know at the moment, all the available known architectures. So which yeah. down. Uh, some of the approaches to reasoning we already mentioned. So when human take decisions or think about something, they don't memorize everything. So if someone says us um, the country of Ukraine, the University of like Polytechnic Institute of, of Lviv or, or anything else, we don't uh, memorize all the small details, textures, like type of doors. We just have some concept, some representation of what is this institution is, how it functions, how, uh, right, like similar to some. Uh, loss of nature, loss of physics, loss of, I don't know, like just behavioral between people. So these models for now, we don't uh, like have them explicitly in our network, but we have like at least two ways of representing world models. So the first one um, is implicit approach when neural network without any additional operators functions, just try to know, to learn uh, the principles of the world around the environment in which it operates. And those uh, can be observed in reinforcement learning when we have agents, those agents just by interacting with the environment, they learn like what will happen if I go left, right, bottom, behind, in front, right? And then knowing those um, answers, Albert actually learns how to behave there and how to get the highest score, how to play games basically. So there are Google DeepMind who works with this and there are a lot of approaches related to reinforcement learning. Then the second approach is more explicit when we somehow we not just rely on learning principles to understand this behavioral and laws of nature, but we actually tell the algorithm what they are. And we can say that explicit, explicit examples could be knowledge graphs, knowledge graphs that where we represent with nodes and connections uh, information about the world. And uh, this is how can we also add this prior, prior information that help, help the algorithm be more efficient in a given environment, knowing this information. Uh, but then again, there are challenges with those um, implicit um, approaches to reasoning because they are not differentiable. Current learning approaches like uh, backpropagation uses uh, differentiates the loss function and then backpropagates the error. And if the part of the algorithm becomes not differentiable, then we can just not efficiently uh, train algorithm uh, with those additional parts. But okay, here are some of the approaches to reasoning that were uh, recently suggested. Here is like one of the good fathers of uh, artificial intelligence, Yang Li Kang, uh, presents Yang Li Kun, uh, we also call uh, the surname. 
here he suggested in 2022 an approach to reasoning when he separates, he introduces different agents uh, that can communicate between themselves. That, uh, like, first, we have a world around us, we need to perceive it. So, there is perception involved, perception model. Mm -hmm. And then, information from perception goes to world model, actors that takes actions within this environment and goes to like some intrinsic, like intrinsic motivation, cost functions that guides the algorithm. Mm -hmm. There are also parts like short-term memory, configuration, and then finally actor takes an action on the world, right? So that's much more complex uh, compared to current models. Current models are based on convolution and there are just different architectures here, like conceptually different parts. That in theory, like again, this is work in progress, but should lead to uh, more mm -hmm. better reasoning, more complex decision making. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, what else? so there are different approaches to reasoning. So there, there is not only one. So this is from Yann Khan, they were from different companies. Sometimes they also introduce uh, their own approaches. But uh, this is an important problem challenge. There are like lots of interesting examples of this limitation, how the current neural networks uh, cannot reason. But again, we'll not go probably too deep in all, uh, all of them. Here one I like. A lot when even um, this G uh, GPT model start to represent um, reasoning like science of reasoning. So here's the idea: we have a square room. In a square room, there are five people, one in the center, and four others in each corner. And we specify to chat just with with this simple comments who are where. So there is a square room, and then top left corner there is Alice, David, top right corner bottom right and bottom left, four people. And in the middle, there is Ed. Ed is standing in the center of the room. And, and then we specify that it looks towards Alice. And then um, we ask questions differently. So here we explicitly said, so sorry, we explicitly said by directions of the world, northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest. And when we ask questions, we actually say, who stands on the left side from Ed? So, here, what is interesting, we never so we just specified parts of the world, like north, south, east, west, and where people are located based on parts of the world. And you say that this uh, person looks towards Alice. And then we ask, who is positioned on the right from Ed? To answer this question, the model should actually know uh, where are those sides of the world and then understand what we mean by towards right side, right? Apply all this reasoning. So not just uh, copying the answer from the previous information that we answered. And it is interesting that uh, GPT-3, the third version of the model, was failing completely this task. But when the next generation of the model's force was trained in addition with images, uh, the model start to show this science of reasoning. So they actually, there, there is a list of questions, like around 20 questions, and the model already responds to like three thirds of them, not, not completely, but already starts to um, answer correctly to the reasoning questions. But okay. Um, yeah, so, um, but those are like science initial stages and for now those models cannot represent like very complex uh, models of the world. Here are like a couple approaches to reasoning. Oh, by the way, we have not that much time, but the first one is uh, approach to reasoning, but this is, there is no explicit learning. So here is, we use just learn, uh, context learning from those lar lar large language models and then modularly combine those small agents to uh, produce the final answer. So this is a combination of neural networks and classical algorithms. Here are a few more examples, again, from literature, very interesting, but I know that the time is limited. So let's jump in directly to like, probably like, yeah, one of the last slides. We briefly mentioned it. Uh, we have this backpropagation algorithm, the main algorithm for training neural networks as of now, uh, introduced by Hinton in nine, like uh, more than like 60, 70 years ago. Uh, and the challenge of basic building blocks of logical building blocks is they're not differenti dif um, differentiable. We cannot differentiate them. So we cannot just put this operator in our like uh, graph of neural network and estimate errors and uh, derivatives at each stage. So then the idea, our idea of this paper was to suggest a new learning algorithm not based on um, differentiation, uh, taking derivatives, not uh, based on taking derivatives, and then the idea is that if the algorithm is, doesn't rely that much on uh, uh, being able to uh, take der derivatives, 
we may actually use logical operators and we may start building this foundations of, of reasoning uh, in neural networks. So uh, we uh, so we introduced a new uh, learning algorithm to train um, neural networks. Uh, we specific, we reduced uh, the all the space of neural networks to only binary networks. Uh, binary networks. Uh, the idea was that they have less like information in their weights, and we may it may be, may be easier to uh, to train them with different approaches, non differentiable ones. Uh, our approach consists in like we introduced several ones like. Um, MHNet, GSNet, they are based either on Monte Carlo optimization or um, Gibbs, uh, oh, I forgot exactly, but Gibbs, um, like at more advanced Monte Carlo optimization methods. Um, we compared our learning approaches to existing like state of the art algorithm for training binary neural networks, like they're here, uh, binary connect, it introduced one time ago, but performs really well. And we're evaluating them on the algorithm on NIST, mm -hmm. uh, NIST data, NIST data set. So just handwritten numbers. Mm -hmm. The goal is to classify handwritten numbers. Mm -hmm. And end operator is defined in a way that if like we use three neural networks that can be um, concatenated uh, during training. So this is a difference between this compositional models where we actually first train neural networks and then combine results. Here we combine them and train those combined uh, network of combined set of networks. So once most of them, two or more networks vote for a given uh, agree, th then the end we say it's true, it's one. In case like they are, they don't agree between themselves, we just take the probability prediction of the first um, of the first network. So this was a hard coded again, this is not like, we can still experiment with approaches to implement this end operator, but this was like uh, the assumption we took. And we experimented all of these end operators. Uh, in the future, we expect to also test other operators. And but we'll come back to this uh, slide later. And so here are the results of training. Uh, th they show that training actually works here. I think the results of training without logical operators. And here we train a multi-layer perceptron without getting into details of the architecture. There are just multiple hidden layers. And uh, we evaluate precision, uh, resultant precision. And here we benchmark it compared to number of hidden units uh, in those layers. And so we see that the algorithm actually trains uh, the precision. No, sorry. Uh, so it actually trains, but uh, it, it's interesting that it achieves maximum at some points, right? At some for some lower uh, number of layers and no lower number of hidden units. Uh, this is due to scaling of, of this training procedure. So it, for now, it doesn't scale to too many layers. It can train few layers with fewer number of units uh, effectively, but achieving like quite high uh, precision. Moving ahead, here are experimental results of training with logical operators, I think. Uh, so here again, we see that the training process uh, like loss goes down. But I think the accuracy, so accuracy here is not exactly, this is a table from the previous slide, I believe. Here, the accuracy doesn't drop as much as you would like to with differentiable algorithms, uh, like the one we see here. So we still achieve um, suboptimal results with those logical operators. Uh, but uh, there are promising signs of being able to train uh, such neural networks, as we see on this plot. So yeah, uh, to conclude, uh, here's the idea is that current neural networks have show really like impressive results, but they have many limitations. Limitations we mentioned, like uh, they use too much electrical power, even compared to human brain, our brain is much more efficient. We cannot explain them. Here are just uh, representation of hidden states of neural networks, first layers, final layers. Uh, to make them more explainable, we need to integrate logical operators, enable reasoning of those models. Uh, and our suggestion is to start with binary networks. And as a next step, of course, our goal is to uh, scale as a result, to make them scale to bigger architectures, to bigger data sets, not only this data set, and uh, yeah, to evaluate carefully the results of this uh, reasoning, reasoning approaches. Yeah, I think this is it. I tried to be brief, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know about, please let me know. Um. Thank you for your report, yeah, and uh, maybe please. Yeah, I have a few one question. Uh, at the beginning, you told about uh, difference of uh, human being 
uh, when we try when uh, he or she tried to compose some uh, report and chat GPT. And uh, you mentioned the like, metadata which the human being understand and using by default. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, to the end of your speech, I missed the connection between the beginning and in the end. And yes. could you clarify these uh, results which you yes. uh, summarized and with the beginning? Because I missed yes. something. Sure. No, no worries, no worries, yes. <laughs> 10 minutes was quite hard, so sorry. Um, but you have five minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, five minutes, yes. so, already good. So uh, here are just two approaches uh, to implementing this reasoning. We went with the left one effectively, right? We didn't, so th there are just two possibilities. Either model can um, implicitly, like uh, implicitly learn to reason, or we can, uh, humans can put this knowledge additional. There is like retrieval augmented generation, other methods to integrate graph information, right? It is closed world model, yeah? But uh, yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, then another question uh, about the logical operators and complexity. Which logical operators uh, do you use and how the complexity of logical reasoning impact the training model and uh, I don't know, clusterization, classification or writing uh, because uh, each logic has some uh, computational complexity and uh, some of them are ir ir irreducible or uh, incomputable in real time in general. That's why uh, logicians use it on uh, some segments where a uh, formula can be computed for the real yeah. in real time can you clarify this so uh, yeah that's true for now we don't plan to solve like you know this formal logic problems or we don't plan to solve like at with this work we are not trying to solve like prove some theorems right this is more advanced stage for now we just see that neural networks as they are now with convolutions they just fundamentally they cannot implement this you know for example implication it, it always says, like, if we apply convolution, it's statistical operator. So it will say, best case, like 99.9% A, and then still probability for B. Our goal here is to say, how can we say that here will be strict implication? So from A, we imply B, you know? So, and we add, we are on very early stage. We implemented only an end operator, like one single operator, right? We, we cannot do much with it. Yeah. So this is like a building block. And once it becomes efficient, we add more logical operators in case it scales. Understood, that's understood but you should uh, know that uh, these implications and reasoning using implications in general, it is not determined undetermined process. So if you want to pr prove something, say logically, yeah, using implications. Uh, you you need to, to know the direction, uh, which exactly which implication you should use to find that uh, fact which you want to uh, prove using the implication. And if you don't know this, it will be like open world problem. Here, here we try to. So here the idea is that to combine somehow this world of logical reasoning with learning, how can we like, for example, we see a set of events, like right, some of them cause each other, some of them are independent, some of them are spurious correlation, even. Yes. And we want to apply not only statistical methods to analysis, but we want to combine this formal logic with a training-based algorithms in the hope, right? Because there is there was history, right? Long time ago, people believed that formal logic, this is how can we build intelligent systems, right? At some point, there were statistical methods completely like it has got very good results. And um, then everyone said, OK, formal logic is something bad. It doesn't work, right? And then now, I think those two worlds, they're often, uh, how to say, say that each other is not right. But if you try to combine both, right? So this is just the idea. So I'm not trying to solve in advance any theorem or something. I just want to see, like, we see the data, and we don't analyze them with statistical methods, probabilities, but we try to say, is there anyone that causes the other? Can we learn it from data? And you know, and then... okay, I have the last question. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so, no, if, 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 if I, I understand how you, uh, okay. where, where, where you find the statistical, because you have the data, 
But what about the implication? How you compute the implication? How you know that A implies B and B implies something else? How you extract them from the data? But but that's the point. That's the point. If we combine both statistics and and this formal reasoning, right? At some points, if again, it can make mistakes. But the idea is that if at some point we see that uh, there there is A and B and they always combined and give a given result in 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 the entire data set, then for us it will be like closed uh, closed system, as you said. But when uh, A and B are always like um, how to say. Uh, like, for example, there is implication. Implication always works in the subset of data. So for our neural network, we'll at least know that it will, implication will work always. It will be trained to say that they imply each other, right? You see where I'm leading? So I, I still don't understand how you extract the implication. Where, where, where how you find that uh, something implies something? Statistical, else. statistical. That's a good point. Yes, statistical. So that's the idea. Combine, okay. combine those. Okay, thank you. Um, exist two kind of knowledges, inductive and deductive. Yes. And now uh, implication uh, is inductive, inductive knowledge, is statistically uh, induced. And uh, why you never mentioned planning and uh, knowledge is a strategy. Really, knowledge is a strategy, and the uh, planning is a process of uh, building uh, all these uh, models of uh, world. World model is a plan of um, actor or yes. agent. Mm -hmm. And no exist knowledge without agent, mm -hmm. without planning, without strategy, mm -hmm. optimal yes. strategy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And every time uh, we should build and rebuild optimal strategy, mm -hmm. obtaining new knowledge and uh, compare knowledge mm -hmm. and verifying is uh, right knowledge or it's uh, mistake something. This is false. You never mentioned, but it is a, a bridge between statistics and uh, um, logic, yep. logical yep. reasoning. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think about, uh, sorry, it's for yeah. only comment, and what do you think about uh, chat GPT, uh, logical and inferring. So the, there are benchmarks, the, they improve from different models. So there are different types of reasoning. There is like uh, this uh, logical, deductive, um, special reasoning. There are like a list of them. And I saw benchmarks when model four works better than model three. But for me, again, this is more like all this chat GPT is like intuition. So I don't see like this planning and reasoning behind. So we can have very strong intuition and our strong intuition can even solve complex reasoning tasks. But I believe there is this fundamental limitation that, uh, again, probably they don't say if they already invented, but at least I never saw a way to this reasoning and planning to implement in this models. ChatGPT is a compiler, not a reasoning. <laughs> yeah, therefore maybe they uh, hidden uh, mechanism of reasoning included in chat GPT. Yes, yeah, but it but looks like uh, a little bit improved T9 uh, in the SMS, if you remember. <laughs> when you write something and they, they try to statistically a gap, I fill the gap. And this is more uh, more scaled. Uh, uh, Probably, but, but who knows? But who knows if, it, like, you know, it can take complex decisions or actually, you know, if you take all the, all the data, all the information, and this logic and prediction becomes too good, like, right? Uh, can it help us like answer complex questions? So people don't know actually. And there are some that believe if just we have all the data in the world and too many computational powers, this intuition can become too strong. But again, personally, I hope we, we still miss some innovation, some new methods, mm -hmm. uh, planning and reasoning. So th that's why I was doing this. Uh, yes. but we'll see. We, we need to continue, but in another place and <laughs> time, and we, yes. I, I hope we will continue. Sure. Also with you too, because it's a uh, uh, actual problem is very interesting. Thank you for your report mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow will be online uh, session and uh, uh, I will... thank you. Thank you. you are welcome tomorrow online. Thank you very much you. and for today. I am recording.